fellowship again around the Word of God in the presence of God. We're so thankful that you're with us this morning to help us and to bless us. We ask forgiveness of our sins, that our lamps might be filled with oil and trimmed and burning, that you would use us now to honor your great name. For we ask it in the name of the beloved Son of God, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I was just coming in when I heard that message go forth. So um, it is true that we need um, to keep our lamps filled. Keep our you know, in the, as you burn, uh, you can't go on what you have done now, think, uh, because fire burning out of oil makes a carbon. So that's the reason of trimming of the, have your lamps trimmed, because the carbon on top of the, of the wick, many of you people about my age, but we used to use uh, the, the coal oil lamp. They, 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 they get a carbon on top where it burn. And therefore, it would interfere with the light, so we must keep all the carbon trimmed off. And that we might um, press on forward towards the mark of the high calling in Christ. Now, it's a, it's a great, beautiful morning outside and in. Amen. As this Easter season is approaching now, and we are now coming up to the last seal tonight the Lord willing. And it's a very mysterious seal. Very, very, because it's not even, it's not even mentioned in the Scriptures. No word, no symbols, anything to hold on to. It's got to come right direct from heaven. And um, it, uh, it's a, a kind of a straining hour for me. It has been all week. Uh, this is my, be my eighth day in a room. And I, Noticed in here many, in these requests, I had to kind of pick out. There was many of them that was uh, wanting I interviews. I, I love that. I'd like to, to give that now. See, but I, I can't right now because you understand that the, the whole, uh, of what we're trying to do now is find the revelation of, of the will of the Lord. You see, and then when you have the interview, then it pulls you off over onto another side and of something else, see? And then, and like in prayer for the sick, 
That's altogether different. You, it's visions and things. You study different and you, you're anointed different. It's just like a, as, as the Bible said there, a, a tree that's planted by the, the rivers of water. Rivers of water. See, same water, but there's an outlet comes this way, this way, and this way. Depends on what outlet. It's the same spirit. Paul, 1 Corinthians 12, did the same thing. Talk about there's many gifts, but it's the same spirit. So you see, if you're working like well, with one thing, then be changed to come over to this other thing over here. You know what I mean. You, you study down that line. You get the people, and uh, now their hearts are all set. What is these seals, their attention? What is it? Night by night, when I come in here, there's such a tension till I have to talk about something else. Just kind of get get it quiet, and you see. And then till the Holy Spirit breaks forth the seal. And then... Um, and I have to, each night like that, then when you change that to healing or something, see, you, the people's all set on one thing. You, you can't hardly change it back to the other right away. And, um, and then also knowing that right among you, things are happening. See, that uh, I'm just, I, I know, I know you, you don't see it. See? I'm just positive you, you don't see it. See? And you say, Brother Brandon, that's a hard thing for you to say that. I know it is. But look, let me just say this now. I suppose this is just tapes for ourselves and so forth. But let me say this, see. That you, you, don't, you don't get it, see, and you're not supposed to get it. So don't try to interpret anything. See? Don't try to put your interpretation to it. You only, you only get further away. Just take my advice if you believe me now. Amen. If God has, has given me favor in your sight, and you know that them revelations and things... Uh, I've been here with you a long time. Amen. And it's always been right. And now to double prove it right, it hooks right in with the Word. See? Amen. So you know it's thus saith the Lord. Amen. It's exactly. See, it's proved to you. Now take my advice as your brother. Don't put your own interpretation to anything. You just go on and live a good Christian life. Because you'll only wind yourself away from the real thing when you do it. See? You'll only wind your way again away from the thing. And all of you are conscious and knows that there's something mysterious happening. Yeah. And it is happening. Yeah. And I know what it is. Now, I'm not saying that. It's the grace of God that lets yeah. me know that what it is. It's something that's tremendous. And it's gone right now, and there's not a way in the world for you to see it. And it's a, I, But so help me with this Bible in my hand. I know what it is. It's been told you before. So just, just don't try to put any interpretation, but just believe me as your brother. See? We're living in a great hour. Amen. We're living in a time where the well, where you just be real humble, be a Christian, and try to live for God and live honest with your fellow man, and love those who don't love you. Don't try to make any see you do. You only make it a mysterious something and mess the real program of God up. Right. See, yesterday afternoon something happened in my room, and I, I'll never be able to, to leave it. You see, and so you um, and about. Two weeks ago, something happened. I'll never be able, as long as I live on this earth, I'll never be able to get away from it. See, and uh, so, but it, the, ch the church, you're not supposed to know these things, so don't. But no interpretation to anything. See, you just go ahead and just remember what you're told. Live a Christian life. Go to your church. Be a real light wherever you are, and just burn for Christ and tell the people that how you love Him, and just let your testimony be with love all the time with the people. See. Well, if you don't, you twist yourself out into a something there, and then you're, you're off a beaten track. The every time you've tried to do it, you've done that. See? So just don't, don't, don't try to make your interpretation, and especially at night when that seal becomes up in front of you. See? Just don't try to interpret it. You just go ahead and just be humble and go right on with the same plain message. Now you say, Brother Brennan, is that we being uh, the church of the living God, shouldn't we? Well, as I was trying, look here. I want to say, say, well, why can't I? I ought to have no. Uh, I, I don't I remember. I'm saying this for your good. Amen. See, I'm saying this so that you'll understand. Yeah. If you believe me, now listen to what I tell you. See? See? Now here, now here's a post, and that's we have called that a listening post. See, and in it's got radio, see? and there's warnings and things can be done. Like a sword in your hand, see. It can pick from the evil or pick from only as it's, it gets its message. 
See? Now, but now, for instance, to the ordinary man, there's been so much cults and clans rise up over uh, uh, little outpourings of the Spirit until people gets all worked up in a bunch of stuff, go out and start another little move and, you know, and, and think, see, you don't want to do that now. See? Now, just remember, just stay the way you are. And you say, well, the Lord shall... No, now, just be careful. Sir. Look here. Let me show you something. See? Did you know there's ten thousands of voices in this room right now? Literally voices of people that's coming through the electronic waves of radio. Why don't you hear them? They're voices. Is that right? They're waving right through here now. There's people's forms and bodies moving right through this room now. Hallelujah! Is that right? Well, why don't you see them? They're here. Actual voices. Like my voice. Well, why don't you hear it? See? It's got to strike something first to reveal it. See? Now you understand? Amen. I just don't inter- interpret nothing. If God wants you anything, He'll send it to you. See? So just be real, real solid now. Hold still. Something has happened. And now, just be real. You understand what I mean, don't you? Amen. And just be, don't try to make yourself odd to be a Christian because you, you take yourself away from God. And you, 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 if you can understand it, this is that third pull. You, you should have caught that the other day. So then, just remember, there will be no impersonation like there was in the other two. And so that's as far as you, you should know. And I just, just remember that you see now there's something taking place in this room and there's something here. There's, there's actually in this room angels. Amen. The voice of God. Amen. But how do you, you can't, if you can't hear the natural voice without something that stands out, how are you going to hear the spiritual voice? Amen. Uh, you might make believe that somebody's singing this certain song that might not even be there. See, But when it actually strikes the crystal that it's supposed to strike, then it gives a true interpretation and show, vindicates it by showing the picture. Amen. See what I mean? Now, the Spirit of God, when He speaks through the true Word, it vindicates itself to show itself that it's right. Do you understand now? Yes. All right. Now, let's pray just again. Heavenly Father, we're about to un- open the lids of this book and uh, as a physical part of, of trying to give back to what you have opened to us in the spiritual realm. And now I pray, God, that you'll help me to give a the right interpretation to these questions that it might be said that that they are there to help the people they are to give them understanding and i pray that you'll give to me understanding that i might uh send it out to your people that they might have understanding that together we might live to the glory and honor of god through jesus christ's name amen now, um, I just want to say that, and um, I thought this thing here uh, control those tapes, but it doesn't, see, and this is a, a desk line, and I thought the tape control used to be here, but uh, I was told to just make motion to the brethren in the, in the room there, the recording room, and they'd know when to stop tapes and when not. See, the tapes has a worldwide ministry everywhere, Amen. see. Everywhere it goes in all kind of languages and everything. So it's things that we'd say right here, we wouldn't say somewhere else. You see, that's the reason it would stop it. Now, answering questions is the quite a thing. <laughs> so uh, I, uh, now in in the, in answer of this, most of them, uh, most of the questions outside of now, every one, some of them don't even pertain to the message at all. But I'm going to or the seals at all, but I'm going to try to answer them. And they is given to me 
And uh, as they was told, I was told that most of them, or a great deal of them, was about uh, requests for prayer and the sick and afflicted and, and uh, different things like that. It goes on. And so it um, uh, didn't pertain anything to any question to be answered. And then the, I was given a bunch that was, uh, it was about different things, the Scripture and things, but maybe we have time, we'll try to answer them the best we can. Now, and if I make a mistake, well, I remember uh, it's not intended to be made a mistake. So, um, does everybody feel good? Amen. Is this a talk about heavenly places in Christ Jesus? What a wonderful place. What a wonderful time. Of all the times that I've been behind the pulpit at the tabernacle, I have never, never in any time of my ministry ever worked into the realms of God and the spiritual realms as been this time. Uh, Beyond anything I ever did in any time of my ministry, in any meeting, at anywhere, I did. Mostly it's on healing. This is revealing of truths by the same Spirit. Same Spirit. And I, I've been to myself altogether, and been boarding at a place or going down eating at a place, and um, I've just been alone, so it's been really a great time. And now, right away, either in the morning or the following morning, I probably, if we can get through in time, I'll just pray for the sick this morning, if these questions don't last too long. So I uh, uh, must get to myself a little while. Amen. The human mind can only stand so much. Amen. And when you get to a spot where you set an hour numb with the presence of God and a pillar of light hanging there before you, you, you can't stay that too long, you see. The human being can't, can't stand it. And so, now, these questions are really nice. I appreciate and the wisdom and things that people use. Now, for the first one, now I'll try to answer them, and then if I, if I don't get it right, well, you, you forgive me then. And if you have a different interpretation and believe it, your idea of it's right, if you just go right ahead, that won't hurt because there's not over about one or two of them that pertains anything to salvation. It's only most of the questions is asked on this other side of the tri uh, on the rapture of the church. So see, it's questions over here which is to come and will come to pass over in the other parts because we're now beyond the church age in our teachings in, in the book. We're beyond over in the time of the calling of the 144,000. Now the first one here are the five wise virgins of Matthew 25. Uh, attendance to the to the bride or are they the bride see if these wise virgins are attendants to the bride where is the bride see now to the best of my understanding these five virgins they were ten of you know that went out see and this year is only a symbol or a parable see uh, I'm going to tell you. See, there were ten of them. Of course, there were more than ten. That was just made a number. But then the, uh, the wise virgins had oil in their lamps. The unwise did not have oil in their lamps. So if that ten there of Matthew, if this is the, the person's question, if those ten there, what, did that mean that that would be the, uh, or these five, brother, that would be just five? See? Just five people? No, it doesn't mean that. It's just a symbol of the virgins, you see, of the virgin that went out with oil in her lamp. They are a portion of that bride. And to my understanding, and then you notice now uh, that they were the virgins of the last watch coming down through the watches. There have been seven watches. And in the seventh watch, the Midnight hour, as we're striking now. See? Now, in this midnight watch, these virgins woke and trimmed their lamps and went in while the sleeping virgin. Now, this part here, this five, if that's the meaning of the question, what meaning was there just five? If we got many questions in here about this, the 7,000 and so forth. Now, that, that was just a symbol, a part of it. And all that waken in this last age here, the seventh watch, that if there wasn't but, uh, but five that uh, awakened at that time, it was translated, went in with the bride, so forth, the bridegroom, 
Now, if they themselves, that don't mean there's only going to be five, because they're sleeping all down through the ages as we've come this week. See? In the days of, uh, of Paul, the angel of the church at Ephesus, Paul, found in this church, being the messenger to it. Remember, Paul, founding the church at Ephesus, become the messenger to that church. And the spirit was in the land that time was a lion spirit. And a lion is the lion of the tribe of Judah, which is Christ. And Christ is the Word. Paul with the Word of that age. Thousands fell asleep in that age. Is that right? Then come the next age. And the uh, uh, time the church got settled down in, in dark age. The ox spirit went forth, work, labor, and sacrifice, and give their lives. Thousands times thousands fell asleep under martyrdom and everything. They're waiting. Then, in the next age comes the Lutheran Reform Age. There went the wisest and cunningest of man. If you notice, man went forth with that, and when he did, he added his own shrewdness. That's what married him into the other part, see? If he just stayed with God's wisdom, just reforming and pulling out, but what did he do? After that man that had the message, Luther, after the death of Luther, they had a Lutheran organization. After the death of Wesley, they had a Methodist organization. See? There, you keep going that way. It, it's just, it does that. Now, I want you to, to, to notice this. See? Now, someone might ask about the Pentecostal, which was the, the third age. You see, each one of those ages only taken a dip into the Holy Spirit. Justification is a work of the Holy Spirit. Sanctification is a work of the Holy Spirit. But the baptism is the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's the reason it took a prophetic <laughs> prophet to come down, no messenger to the age, because the Holy Ghost came himself in his fullness of the baptism. But at the end of the ages, it always ends up on the others. We find there then the messenger sent, and all these scruples and things are to be placed in their places. Like that. Then the rapture comes for the church. But as many as lotting all these different things, the sun turning to darkness, the moon, they put that way back here in the Christian age. They just fail to see them. Three questions was asked our Lord there, see, when he answered them. Now last night I think there's no question at all. We took each one of those questions and put them right under the seals, and the seals is a whole book together itself. Amen. Believe that, Doctor? Yes. See, the whole thing is wrapped together. And we took what Jesus said here. They asked three questions. See, when will these things be? What will be the sign of your coming? What's the end of the world? And he come right down, and we pulled them, everyone, under that but one. Amen. What was that? The seventh seal. Why? not known. That's it. Every one of them come right out. I paralleled them right exactly back and forth. And um, me, when I wrote last night and got in there, got to, I went back to look at my old note I took it off, off back there. Well, I seen where I put one in the other's place. I got across them back and forth. That's what then I guess you caught it. You, you get it? See? I wrote down here what I was going to write over on this other side and wrote over here. But to, uh, but. Both of them, 9-11 or 9-6 or what, uh, 6 and 11 and 9-11, and, and and which it wasn't so, it by its first and next verse under. See, and that was it, uh, the answer between the pestilence and the war, you see. That's where it was. So uh, I was just so happy. I was just uh, carrying on like a, uh, I was enjoying the stimulation from the revelation. <laughs> so I, I put it this over here, set there the pencil or pen, and I put down it. Uh, 11 on both places when it shouldn't have been. I think it's 9 instead of 11 for the other side. But now, did you see how perfectly they paralleled? Now, don't forget that. They paralleled down to the 6th and stopped. See? And what's the, what's the opening of the seals? It comes down to the 6th and stops. Just silence in heaven, that's all it said. For the space of a half hour. Now, now, in these, they, I, I have to hurry up and answer these because, see, each one of them is a sermon four weeks long. You see, on, on each one, you just get off on something else. But I, I don't mean to do that because I won't get everybody's question as far as I can. 
These virgins, see, they're made up of, that's just part of them in that age. See? Each age has the virgins. See? Um, a seal, the angel comes to the church, to the angel of the church of Ephesus. Right. See? Then get over here. Then after the writing to the church of Ephesus, compare that back, a seal's open. That's just the way we're bringing it. God get it all to you. See what I mean? It's the Lord willing. What do I have first? Church ages. Is that right? Next thing, the message to the church ages. Everybody get that clear now? Yeah. Okay. First we got the church ages and got the history, laid down the Nicaea uh, councils and pre nicaea councils and everything that we could find in history and found out that the correct interpretation of the word was exactly with the history. And bring it on down to this day, and this Lady Osea, and you, you don't have to have history in that. This is making history now. See? There it is. And then showed what would be in this age. Now we come back with the seals and open that seal. God opens that seal for us. What's that? First is a messenger, church age. Next is the seven seals. Now we find out the corruption that hits in the seventh church age. But the seventh seal doesn't reveal anything. What's going to happen to it? See? Because at the end of that church age is to come a prophetic gift to reveal these things. Are you following it? All right. Now, notice how each one of those seals, then I come over here and those three questions ask Jesus Christ, what... When will these things be? There won't be one stone on another. When will this be taken down, this religious center of the world, and another be set up? And when will it be? Antichrist rise. See? And what went out to meet it? The Word. The Word against the Word. Then it settled down to politics and everything else. There went the ox labor. See? That's exactly the second. And Jesus said so in Matthew 24. See? Then we come down from that to the kindness of the reformers. The man, beast, went out to meet it. That's what they think. Then we come down, the next to the fourth seal, when Antichrist become a conglomeration and had a name, Death. Now watch what Jesus said. And he would throw her to the fires and even kill her children. That's death riding. That's both Protestant and Catholic. Mark of death on each one of them. Her and her children be destroyed. So if you're depending on your denomination, you better get away from it right now. Amen. And then when it come to the seventh seal, Jesus stopped right there. He opened the sixth seal by saying the moon will be turned into blood and darkness and everything, these things that take place. We come right over here and open up the sixth seal. After the sixth seal is open, they swing right back and show the same thing. There you are with three different places in the Scripture tied them together with the revelation. See? Watch. The place that Jesus said so, the place that when he opened the book, it was hid from the foundation of the world, and then the revelation of this day, you're placing it right in there, ties the three together. And three is a witness. Amen. So it's true. It's absolutely true. Now, these virgins that come along here, they are the ones that fall asleep and then the whole body is made up together of that group. That goes to make the, see, to make the, the wise virgins and the unwise virgins are the ones that started back there at the same time the wise virgins started, Antichrist, and they are the ones that tries to buy oil. Now, just look here. See how perfect you Everywhere you go, if I could stand here and talk the things that's revealed in that room, I tell you, swing your heads around. But how are you going to do it when you got a whole thing here? And then you somehow another when you get away from people, that it begins to open up. Mystery. Then you see things that you're daring to say to the people too. Because you see, if they would, they start little isms. And let's look what this little gift of healing has done. How it confused the church. Everybody had a sensation. Everybody had this right down in my heart. God knows it's the truth. I know it wasn't right. Because He told me so. But it's a false impersonation to only throw the people off. 
That's right. Amen. Now, but you see, you can't say those things. Best just leave it alone. And you remember the third fool? He said, don't tell nobody. What did I say was that? How many remembers that? I'm sure. Remember standing there trying to lace that eyelet and that little shoe in the vision? He said, you can't teach Pentecostal babies supernatural things. Now, I said, this will be the third poll, and it will not be no one. So help me by the grace of God. Now, now we're, we're right down at the end time now. It won't be too long until mercy seat will be judgment seat. While you see these saints coming in and these people... Coming in, you better come in too if you're not already in. Now, gathered in heavenly places, see, it also means more than just to be rejoicing. In heavenly places, if you're really assembled in Christ, it's a fearful thing. Standing by the, that angel of the Lord, you think you'd just be shouting and screaming? Ah, that's not it scares you to death and everything. So you see, there, there's a difference in this rejoicing bubble dancing, which is all right, and then coming down to the real thing. Amen. That's where the fear, it's a fearful thing. You know, it's your fear, you're lost, but you really, but before angelic being and the Holy Ghost Himself standing there. Now, that will be part of the bride. That's what will go to, to make it up. See? All those who sleep. And can't we absolutely see? pray now that you'll grant the healing of the people who these handkerchiefs lay upon. In Jesus' name, amen. Eyes are all right now? Thank you. Somebody step on something? Too many recorders put too much pressure on it. All right, you swap. You just get a tape and swap the tape and make it off of that. Now, notice now the next question: uh, Should evangelists continue on the field in this hour? Of course, what they mean certainly. By all means, don't change a thing. If Jesus is coming in the morning, preach today like if it's going to be ten years from today, but live like it's going to be at this hour. Yes. Don't don't get scrupled up now. That's what I'm trying to warn you about. See, just don't be odd, peculiar. Don't change nothing. But if you're doing something wrong or doing evil, repent. See? Come back to God. Continue on your evangelistic service just as you always did. If you're building a house, put it on up. If Jesus comes tomorrow. You'll be found faithful to the duty. If you're building your church, go on, put it up. I'd rather be putting my money in something like that and be found within my pocket, see? Amen. So just, just keep on. Continue as you are. Everybody understand now? Amen. Continue right on. Just go right on as you are. Now, this... Um, Amen. Just don't stop. Don't do nothing. Just go right on just as you are. Keep on serving the Lord. Now, for instance, if you was, if you was working for a man and you know it was 15 minutes before quitting time, well, you'd say, huh? Just 15 minutes more, so I might as well just go over and sit down. <laughs> you get docked for that 15 minutes. Amen. <laughs> you're planting wheat, plant your wheat. If you're digging potatoes, go on and dig them out. Say, well, nobody eat them. I don't make any difference. Dig them out anyhow. <laughs> just continue on as you are. I got a letter from somebody the other day. Somebody told him, said, well, the time's at hand. Sell the farm. Now, you won't need the food that you live off of on farms because uh, this millennium is going to start and you won't need it, so you just go ahead and um, while the tribulation period is going on, your children's not saved, so just let them, um, let, let the children have the farm or they can eat off of it, but you all sell your farm and, uh, and uh, something like that. All they had, I said, oh my. Amen. <laughs> if I know he's coming tomorrow and I was a farmer, I'd put my crop in today. Amen. Sir, if he made me a farmer, I'm going to stay right at my duty. If he made me a mechanic, say who's somebody um, said the other day, he said, a fellow come in and said, say, um, brother, you know what? He said, I'm going to give you the second set of keys. I bought a new car. He said, I'm going to give you the second set of keys. Told his pastor. He said, I'm going to give you the second set of keys. 
because the rapture might come, you know, and said, I won't be needed anymore. <laughs> Pastor's going to miss it. <laughs> that's making ready, isn't it? <laughs> All right, but that's that's the way it is. See, we mustn't be that way. We must be a, a sane, solid Christian. Okay? But I'm put here to work right up to the last minute. I've got a job to do, and I'll be right found faithful to post to duty. If he comes this morning, I will be standing right here in the pulpit. Amen. He said, Brother Bam, if he has come this morning, shouldn't you be out there? No, sir, this is my post to duty. Amen. I'll be standing right here preaching when he comes. Amen. Saying the same things I am there when he comes, I'll just move right on out with him. Amen. If I'm hoeing potatoes, I'll just be hoeing away. Just as hard as I can. When he comes, I'll just drop the hoe and take off. <laughs> you remember in the Jubilee year? If they just hoeing hoe with the hoe... They kept on hoeing. They know the Jubilee year is maybe ten minutes more and the trumpet will sound at the Jubilee year. They just kept on pitching hay, whatever they're doing. But when the trumpet sounded, then they dropped the fish fork and gone. That's it. Just keep on pitching hay until the trumpet sounds. All right. Question. According to the opening, did that anything happen? It, it made a noise up here. A question. According to the opening of the fifth, fifth seal... Moses and Elijah have have to die. What about Enoch? I don't know. I, I, if I don't know, I'm just going to tell you I don't know. See? I, I, don't, I don't know all the answers, folks. I, I don't know. And if I don't know, I'm going to tell you I don't know. If I do know, I won't tell you till I do know. See? But I, I don't know. I've often wondered about that myself. There was Enoch. I see Moses come, and Elisha comes back and they're killed. See? But now Enoch was translated before time. Uh, I've often thought and wondered myself, well, why, why about that? But then here's the only consolation I can say is this. Now notice, Moses only served God 40 years. See, he was, a, he was 120. But 20 years, the first uh, uh, 40 years, I mean... He uh, was getting his education. Is that right? The second 40 years, God has taken it out of him. And the third 40 years, he served God. All right. But Enoch walked 500 years before God and was blameless. See? So Moses comes back to serve some more time, him and Elijah. Now, that, I don't say that's right. See? I just give you that for a thought. See? But I, it's to say what part, I don't know. I really can't tell you what, what, what happened there or what God will do. What is the, the name of the... It'll be on the people of Revelations 3.12. I, I don't know. <laughs> he said, give them a new name. I, I, I don't know what that is. See? It'll be probably made known when we get there, but I, I don't know what it is now. See, see he is going to do that. See? He'd give them a new name if, if they just know themselves. See? Now, Brother Branham, is there any scripture uh, permitting marriage after divorce? This is very important. It says important. Well, uh, that's the reason it wasn't pertaining to this. Uh, as far as I can see, my brother or sister, whoever it may be, there isn't, unless your companion's dead, because the Bible said we're bound to them as long as they live. Amen. So it, it's, as far as being any scripture, that's what was asked here. Is there scripture? See? Is there any scripture? Not as I can find. See? Not as I can find. Because Paul said that the, the married couple, if the companion's dead, then they're free to, to marry whomsoever they will in the Lord. But until then, but watch. You take it, until death we part. That's it. You don't talk an oath over that, you see. So I don't think there is. Now, if, if you found some and it's correctly, why, all, all right. But as far as myself, I, I don't find any. What does see thou hurt not the oil and the wine mean in Revelation 6, 6? It's the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah. We just got through that. Probably somebody will come in a little late for the message, they, what, for the other tapes, you see. Uh, hurt not the oil 
And the wine, what does the oil and wine mean? The oil, as we took it in simple, means the Holy Spirit. See? Wine is, uh, and oil is connected together in the Bible in worship. See? And the wine is, we put, that's where I got the idea of the stimulation. Wine stimulates. And wine, uh, in its, uh, its uh, anti-type of its natural from stimulation, is revelation. Now just think, what stimulates the church? Revelation. Okay. So wine, the new wine would be, now watch, the oil and wine went together in sacrifice, went together in, in the church worship. Now notice, symbol together, connected together. You've got a concordance, you look, you see a whole string where wine and oil is met together in worship. If you've got a, a crudence, why it says up there. Now notice on this, but now you see, the oil is always the Holy Spirit. We find that over in Ezekiel, and we find it in the Old Testament, we find it all through the New Testament. Why do we anoint the sick with oil? We anoint the sick with oil because it symbolizes the pouring out of the Holy Spirit upon them. See? Also, the wise virgin had oil. The unwise had no oil. Spirit, see? Now that is the oil. And then the wine, if, if, if the oil represents, represents God, God is spirit. See? God is word. In the beginning was word. Word was with God. Word was made flesh. And that was God. Amen. Now, then if the word now in sets here in a, a natural form, now... The wine is the water like that, or the revelation that reveals that uh, interpretation of the word which stimulates the believer. You see, my, they just say, I've never seen it before. My glory, that's what? See, stimulation see? of revelation. I didn't know that till the day sitting there either, see. Now, that's what the, the oil and wine, that was... See, you heard about as the black horse rider. And that was during the time of the dark age, the third age of the, of the church. Notice, and in there, there's just a little bit of it left. Just a little bit. But don't hurt it. And I believe if you get that, uh, the, the uh, third uh, seal on tape, you, you would find it there where we explain it in detail. Uh, in detail, rather. Brother Branham is the Lamb's Book of Life. In the book of life, the same book. Sure. Well, that's where all redemptions wrote in this book, see? Their names are in... You say, well, uh, our names put on the Lamb's book of life, Brother Branham. I, I got it put on the other night. No, you didn't. <laughs> no, you didn't. You just found out it was on there. <laughs> because their names were written before the foundation of the world, see? Uh, that's, it's all the same book, see? Now, Brother Branham, is it true that that uh, every Jew born since Christ came will be saved. And who are the 144,000? Are they the uh, predestinated ones to be sealed with the Holy Ghost? And what is their mission? There's about three questions in one there. But here, the first one is, um, is it true that every Jew born since Christ uh, came into the world is to be saved. No, no, nothing will be saved. Only those whose names were put on the Lamb's book of life before the foundation of the world. Jew or Gentile. Okay? That's all. The book holds that mystery. And the book is only unfolding it now. Not each one's name, but what the mystery of the book is while it's calling those names. You, find, you understand that now? See? The book doesn't say, now, um, uh, Lee Baal is to be saved in time of this church age or, or Armin Neville or, or whoever. No, I don't say that. It just shows a mystery, unfolds mystery, what the thing is. But we ourselves, by faith, believe it. That's what I said the other night. Someone said, well, there's no need me trying it. Brother Bram said there's only be one saved out of Jeffersonville. See? Now, see, it's showing a parable. That, 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 isn't the, that, that isn't it. There might be... Thousands saved. I don't know. I hope every one of them is saved. <laughs> See, but I don't know. But here's the way I want to believe it. I'm that one. 
you believe the same for you. If you don't, then there's something wrong with your faith. You're not sure what you're doing. How can you, how can you walk up there in the face of death when you're not too sure whether you're saved or not? How can you go down here and say to this crippled man laying here, blinded and twisted up, Thus saith the Lord, rise up, Jesus Christ makes you whole. Amen. How can you stand that little cold, stiff body laying there that's dead and been dead for hours and hours and laying there cold and stiff and say, Thus saith the Lord, rise up to your feet. <laughs> you better, you have to know what you're talking Amen. about. Amen. Well, say death claims everything, it's all gone. Yeah, but when the Word of God is revealed and you know it's God, that changes things. Amen. Right. Now, Yes, these Jews, uh, are not, not all the Jews will be saved. No, sir. They will not be saved. Only those who, when he's speaking of, of Jew, Jew just as a name that was given to him after they left, uh, I believe, Nebuchadnezzar over and began to call him Jew first because the tribe of Judah was taken there and is given the name of Jew. Now, because they uh, come down from Judea and they got the name of Jew, but now Israel is different. Israel and Jew is altogether different. Every Jew, every Jew isn't an Israelite. See? No, he's just a Jew. But then Israel, Paul said all Jews will be saved. He said all Israel will be saved. Why? Israel's name, that's, that's the name of redemption all the way back. See? And all Israel will be saved, but not all Judea, Judaism will be saved. See? Just like Gentiles. There'll be a, there's thousands, times thousands of, of people, yes, literally millions of these organizations. And they're called Christian, Church of Christ, and all such names as that. That don't mean one thing. That's right. Not, that don't mean they'll be saved. People say, now you've got to belong to this or that, an organization, certain organization. If your name isn't on our book, you're lost. Now that's cult. That's cult. See, there's only one way you can be saved. And that is not him that willeth or him that runneth, him that, that is God who shows mercy. And God, by his foreknowledge, predestinated a church Amen. for his glory. That's the ones that say. Right. Now, your faith is so anchored there. You say, well, my faith is anchored there. And look back what kind of life you're living. You see, you're not even fit for there. Your anchor's wrong. You got on sand instead of a rock. Amen. The first little wave will throw it off. Let the word be revealed. Something. My church don't teach that. That shows right then you wasn't anchored Amen. on no rock using sand. <laughs> That's right. So now you see, now in the 144,000, uh, are they the predestinated ones? Yes, sir. That's Israel, spiritual Israel. Just think there will be millions of them in there. I don't know how many is in there now. I guess a uh, whole group. But they will not all be saved because they are in Judea. Do you have any idea how many is there now? I don't know, but they're probably after this next persecution begins to rise, they're accumulating by, you know, I've got a tape on them taking West with me now to, to one of the, the, uh, the Covenant Church, which is at, it's just the uh, old, um, oh, I forget now, it started, uh, they have them down there in Africa, Dutch Reform. Uh, it's a Dutch Reformed Church of Covenant, is Now, if there's any of you sitting here, I'll tell you why. You're still holding on to that old Heidelberg Catechism. And that's exactly the reason you're still in the still Dutch Reformed. So you, you might polish it up by American name, but that's, that's the thing behind it, because your teachers in that same catechism, the old Heidelberg. You ask your pastor if that isn't right. Okay. So uh, now, notice this, 144,000. They are predestinated ones to be sealed by the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. That's exactly right. All right. The, now, if, he's any, now if, I'm, if I didn't answer suits you, well, uh, uh, maybe I'm, I could be wrong. See, but this, this is the best of my knowledge, you see. This is the best of my knowledge. Brother Benham, uh, as you have travailed or tra on the serpent seed. Oh, oh, I never noticed this one. This has slipped up on me. <laughs> serpent seed this week. Will it be in order to ask this question? My friends have asked me to explain Genesis 4-1, and I can't. Will you help me? It's, it's all for the subject, but anyhow, I, I, I'll try my best by the help of God. Let's see now. Let me just polish up this a little bit. I think that's where she said I got a son from the Lord. I, 
I believe it is. I think he said that. Uh, I'm going to check be sure, because I said the other night, seven instead of, uh, seven hundred instead of seven thousand. So uh, it makes me so nervous. See, and you just have to be watching, and the enemy on every side, you're, you're conscious of that, you see? Yes, that's it. And uh, Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have begotten a man from the Lord. Now, I'm just going to answer you a question, my brother or sister, and I remember, not, not throwing to you, no, I'm trying to help you, see, I love you. And I love the person who might have been a critical on it, but I don't think this person is critical. They said, help me, see, because the people believe it. But they're just not sufficient to uh, be posted by the Spirit to know what to say to the person that's asked them that. Now, she's saying here, what the question is, no doubt, that they're saying, he said she gotten this man from the Lord. How do you think life could ever come if it didn't come from the Lord, be it right or wrong? Who sent, who sent Judas Iscariot into the world? Amen. Tell me that. The Bible said he was born the son of perdition. Just ask him that. Be like a worm and a lemon, see? See, now, you see? They can't, they can't, it is. Notice. Then, if you want to take them a little more technique, look, Eve talked here, if you want to take it in the language it's here, which is written, so it's hid from the eye, wise and prudent. Eve here, the way it's taught, that God was the one that she begotten this son by. And he's a spirit and he can't do it. Amen. See? I watch here. If you want to notice that. I have gotten a, a man from the Lord. See? You can take, make it sound any, but it's got to have its right interpretation. See? Amen. Yes, sir. No, sir. If that, then the Spirit, and we always follow the nature of our parent. You know that. Look at the baby. The nature. Well, then, Adam was a son of God. Eve was a daughter of God. Right? The first thing of the creation of God, which could not have one speck of, of evil anywhere about evil, wasn't even known. Then why was Cain a liar, a murderer, and everything else? Where did that come from? Just ask yourself that question. That was a serpent seed. Don't the Bible say so? Watch his seed all the way down. In that, he become. Who does the world belong to? The devil. Who controls it now? The devil. Exactly right. The devil controls the world. He told Jesus, said, see how pretty it is, all the glory? I'll give it to you if you worship me. Right? He is the controller of it. Now, he owns it. Now, watch his children are wise. Devil's children. Or take Cain's children, if you want to, and bring it right down through the genealogies. And you find out that they were smart men, every one of them. Amen. But now, when he killed Abel, and God gave him back, saith, was a type of the righteous to redeem being dead and raised again. And from there, now watch, not from the first seed of the natural, they die. Now you got your minds open? Yeah. The first seed of the natural seed, just ordinary good, it typed the modern church, Abel. In order to preserve that line coming down, that one died so another could raise up. You see? So it has to be rebirthed again. You catch it? Amen. Or just so you get it, see? see? There you are, the perfect type. So even the natural man born of, of Adam, his father, shows that natural trend. Won't work. The natural man don't perceive the things of God. Amen. So there was a man come natural and died in order to restore that again. And it was represented in the death of, of, uh, of Abel and the replacing by, by Seth. And watch what kind of a people that was. Now that spirit brought forth from him. Humble, farmers, sheep herders. Watch what come from this wisdom of the world here. Smart men, builders and and with metals and all kinds of smart intelligence and things. Look where they wound up when we were down there and God destroyed every one of them. Amen. Every one of them and saved the humble. 
Didn't Jesus say in Matthew 5, the meek shall inherit the earth? Amen. So, they don't worry. They haven't got one foot to stand on. They, they don't believe that the Cain's son. But we have got a tape on that if you'd like to hear it explained in detail. See? No, sir. I've seen I've got a piece of paper up there where a science says, now I'm going to prove that Eve never eat an apple. She had an apricot. Okay? Yeah. I got the paper up there at home now. See? It's an apricot. How, how far can people... That's a carnal mind. Amen. Then actually, Moses never crossed the water. He crossed through a sea of reeds. Brought Israel across at the upper end of the Dead Sea is a bunch of reeds there, a whole sea of reeds. And just where the waters had been one time went down and Moses took a shortcut and went around that way. <laughs> and the Orthodox churches accepted it. You see that? The Orthodox churches re- accepted it that was so. Oh, man, can't you see that seed of the serpent, that Antichrist, yeah. the whole thing laying right there? Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Brother Branham, please... Pray for my little... Gra- well, that's a prayer request. I say, pray for my little grandson, very ill with the flu. He is in the Riverview Hotel. Lord Jesus, this uh, poor person here never wrote that just in vain. She's seen you just uh, deliberately remove even rheumatic fever from a little boy the other night. She knows that you are the great God and we offer our prayers to that little boy. In the name of Jesus Christ, may he be healed. Amen. When somebody writes anything, it's not in vain. They, they, they got up, no matter how simple it sounds to us and how much out of there, but, but there's something behind it, you see. That lady, that little boy, something. Is the Elijah who comes to preach to the Jews the real man who live on the earth, or will he be the spirit of Elijah in some other man? Now, that's, uh, I'm afraid to say, I don't know. Let me read that again. Is the Elijah who comes to preach to the Jews, or there, the real man who live on earth, or will he be a spirit of Elijah in some other man? Now, if I could answer that correctly, I could tell you about Enoch, see? But I, I can't do it, see? only thing I know is just the Scripture says uh, what it will be. And uh, now, it might be that the... Um, now, uh, I'm kindly inclined. Now, let me say it this way. And I hope the tape, the brother know the tapes will understand this. I'm inclined to believe that it will be anointed man of their spirit because, see... He says, does not on Elisha, does not the spirit of Elijah rest on Elisha? Yeah. Yeah. The spirit of Elijah. And he done just like Elijah did. See? So I, 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 but I can't say that's true. I, I don't know. See? I'm honest with you. I don't know. Brother Brenham, would you please answer this one for me about baptism? Matthew 28, 19 teaches the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And... Peter, in Acts 2.38, in the name of the Lord Jesus. When was this change come about in Acts of the Apostles? Uh, I believe in the Lord Jesus. Well, uh, brother or sister, ever who wrote it, there, there was no change come about. See? It, but Peter done exactly what... Jesus said, do. Amen. Now, if somebody come and say, use the titles of Father, Son, Holy Ghost, they did what Peter said not do, Amen. or what God said not do. See? Now, Jesus said, that it would just, it just take a little bit where I want to just, just show you something. Here, notice. i notice, if you're here, the person, I'm going to put three pieces of material here. Now, look, this is the Father. This is the Son. This is the Holy Ghost, as Trinitarian people believe them, believe that they are three separate individuals. Amen. They believe that, see. Well then, now, let me, um, and then in Matthew 28, 19, Jesus said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He, uh, no, I beg your pardon, I'm quoting Acts now, or, and uh, 
Acts 2, I believe. No, Luke 24, 49, according. He said, um, let me read it, and then I got it. See, and then, because the other day I said that when I didn't, I want to be sure I get this right. Uh, I know the title of what you're saying there, but I want to get just what he said. Let's begin um, at 16th verse of uh, 29. Then his eleven said at me, uh, the, then the eleven went away into the uh, Galilee and to the mount where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power in heavens and on earth is given un, uh, all powers is given unto me in heavens and in earth. Now, where's the power of God? Where's God at? If all the power are out of heaven, and all the power that's in earth has been given, now where's God at? There he is. See, that's what he's talking to you. All right. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now, the Trinitarian sphere of that, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. That's not even Holy Writ. See? He said, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son. And of not in the... It put a name before each one. One name. Watch here. Didn't say baptize them in the names. In A-M-E. One name. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Now I want to ask you. Is Father a name? No. Is Son a name? No. How many fathers is here? Which one of his name Father? <laughs> How many sons are here? <laughs> How many humans are here? <laughs> Which one of these names, father, son, or human? See, like a woman said one time, she said, Brother Bram, the Holy Ghost is a name, it's a person. I said, yes, sir, I am a person, but my name's not person. I am a person. See, my name's William Branham. <laughs> but I am a person. The Holy Ghost is a person. That's what it is. It's not a name. It's a title of the person of God. Amen. See? It's a title to the personality of God. What He is. Now, now, if He said, Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, not in the name of the Father, name of the Son, name of the Holy Ghost, or not in the names of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, but in the name Amen. of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And if Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is no name, then what about it? Say, if it's name, or which one, you want to call one of them a name, which name is it? If you want to call the title a name, then which name, which title is it you want to baptize? The Father or the Son? It's singular. See? Now, we turn over here, and, and that's the last book of Matthew. Like I've always explained it. If you read a love story that said, John and Mary lived happy ever after. See, it's because you, know, you don't know who John and Mary is. Go back to the first year story. Find out who John and Mary is. See? Now that's what you're doing here in Matthew. You're only reading the last part of it. Go back to the first of Matthew and read what the story is. That's the last chapter of Matthew and the last verses. Amen. Like you picked up a book and say, John and Mary lived happy ever after. That was John Jones. And, then, and Mary so-and-so. That was, uh, no, that was John that was John Henry. And that was so-and-so. This is John somebody and so-and-so. No, you don't know yet, you see. The only thing to do to be sure is go back in the book and read it. <laughs> so you can't pick up a piece here. you got to put the whole thing together to make the picture. Now go back to Matthew, the first chapter, and it goes and gives the genealogies coming down. Uh, first chapter. Then it gets down to the 18th verse. It said, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. Is that right? Amen. Now, I want to ask you something. Now, listen again. You, you call it. Who's this? God the... God the, God the, now which one is this? Which one is this? Which one is this? Son, all right, now we got it now. Now what did you say this was, God the who? The Holy Ghost, all right. Now, all right, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with a child of the, now I thought you said God was his father. Now, there's something wrong here. He can't have two fathers. You know that. Amen. Now, there's something wrong. Amen. Now, which one of these men, if there are three persons, which one of them is his father? Amen. The Bible says here plainly, 
She was found with the child of the Holy Ghost. Amen. God the Father had nothing to do with it. And Jesus said God was His Father. We know God was His Father. Then He had two fathers. Now is He illegitimate? Sure enough. I see where you got yourself. Now, then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willingly to make her public examples, minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, remember, he's a good man now, and a hand of the Lord is a hand like now. Then we were predestinated, we'll catch it. Amen. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. Are you following me in your Bible? Amen. All right. Saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not taking thee, marry thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of God the Father. Did I misread that? Yes. Sure did. That which is conceived in her has nothing to do with God the Father. It's the Holy Ghost. And now we know that God was His Father. Amen. Is that right? Amen. So what is it? The Holy Ghost is God's Spirit, of course. Amen. Now you got it. See? God the Father and the Holy Ghost is the same person. He had two daddies. Amen. Then what, what kind of person you worship? What kind of gods you got now? Amen. See? God the Holy Ghost and God the Father is the self-same Spirit. Amen. And she shall bring forth a son. This fellow here. And thou shalt call his name, what? Amen. His name. Amen. Now remember, his name, Amen. Jesus, or he shall save his people for, from their sins. Now this is all done that might be fulfilled, which is spoken uh, of the Lord by the prophet, to who the word comes to, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and he called his name Emmanuel which is being interpreted, God with us. Amen. What is the name of God? What is the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost? Jesus. The Bible says Jesus was His name. Amen. Then the a fellow here trying to debate it once during the tabernacle said, Brother Branham has wiggled out of all of them and he won't this one. So you have shows three different persons exactly, perfectly. said, Matthew, third chapter. Here was John standing preaching. Here come the son walking up to be baptized. He went into the water, was baptized with John, went back up out of the water, and lo, he said, the heavens was opened unto him. And it said, down from heaven came the Holy Ghost like a dove descending. And a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom three distinct persons right at one time. <laughs> huh? It just goes to show that people without the baptism and our call to the office of, of, of a minister has no business to be in the pulpit. Amen. Right. I, I, I could take that person out by the help of God and time in such a knot and make their head swim. Look, don't you want, not, I don't mean, I don't, I don't sound right. Forgive me. I didn't mean that, Lord. I didn't mean, I, I felt him check me on that, see. So I didn't even say it that way. I'm, I'm sorry. I believe that the Holy Spirit could reveal to that person some secret. That sounds better. It's just like tuning an instrument when you do something wrong. You can tell it, it's Christian. You said something wrong, he didn't like that. See, that was putting me in there, see. I ain't in the picture at all. I just don't even want to be myself or nothing, just him. Let him do the work. He does the sound, and the trumpet's a mute. The voice behind it one gives the sound. Now, look here. The man misinterpreted the word. See, it's remember, it's hid from the eyes of wise and prudent. Revealed to babes. Now, here is that one person, Jesus Christ, standing on earth. Now, heavens, of course, his atmosphere is above. Now, what? And John bear record. Now, that man's got to say, here's God the Father. And here's God the Holy Ghost, like a dove. And here's God the Son making three persons. It's wrong. John, standing back here, know this was the Lamb. John said, I Bear record seeing the Spirit of God like a lamb. Amen. There's God, the Spirit, like a dove, I mean. Now, there's the same thing I said the other night, you see. It said a seven, a hundred, seven, see. The Spirit of God, this was a lamb here. And the Spirit of God, the dove, was God. Amen. The Spirit of God descending from heaven and a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am pleased to dwell in. Amen. All powers in heaven and earth is given in my hand. See? That's Him. Now, what was His name? 
Jesus. Serpent. See? So as far as a Trinitarian theory of being three different gods, that's heathenism. Amen. That never was taught in the Bible. It never was taught in the line message, but it was adopted in the next, which was Antichrist. As anybody you want to, any theologian, that never did come only through the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Amen. There is why it come out with Martin Luther. That's why it continued on with John Wesley and poured on down into the Pentecostals. In the day that the Pentecostals come out, they got the Jesus only group. Now that's wrong again. Amen. How can Jesus be his own father? Amen. See? So it knocks that out. But there's supposed to be an ego time come. See? That's the time that's to straighten all those mysteries Hallelujah. out. Amen. 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 Father, Amen. Son, and Holy Ghost is titles of the Lord Jesus Christ. Watch. Amen. All three of them. Matthew said, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Amen. Peter said, Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Father? The Lord said unto my Lord, Set thou on my right hand. Is that right? Amen. Father, Son, Jesus Holy Ghost, the Logos that went out of God, Father, Son, Holy Ghost is absolutely three titles of the person of God manifested in, in, in three different ways or three attributes of Himself. Amen. And to make it plain to someone who wouldn't understand, it's like three offices of the same God. Amen. Actually, it's three attributes of the same God. Amen. God acting in three different, under the fatherhood, under the sonship, under the Holy Ghost dispensation. God is perfect in three. You remember the Antichrist number four? See? God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is absolutely Lord Jesus Christ. When you baptize in the name of Jesus only, that's wrong. Just that, baptize you in the name of Jesus. That's absolutely wrong. I'm acquainted with many Jesuses. Well, the Latin countries are full of them. Jesus is, but this is the Lord Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. Tells exactly who He is. There's many Branhams. If you want to talk about me personally, but I'm I'm the one William Marion Branham. That's that's me. But there's many other William Branhams and so forth around. But this is distinctly calling one person, the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. the Anointed One. There's only one of them. Now that's right. So I, if it's any farther than that, you write a letter or something or. Or sometime when I'm on other questions, I want to try to get this so I can see if we can get some of these sick people suffering prayed for. Yeah. Brother Brown, if this question is not is not fit, does not fit in the do not answer. That's not. It's not free sale. What children? What children go in the rapture? If any small ones. Thank you. They'd ever sign on name after you don't sign necessary. But look. When God puts a name on the Lamb's book of life before the foundation of the world, there's not nothing in the world can rub it out because it's wrote with the ink of the blood of Christ. Amen. Be it this big, that big, or that big, or whatever it might be, it goes just the same. Amen. All children, all the church, everything there is is God by His foreknowledge. Now, we don't know. You say, Brother Branham, can you prove that you're there? No, sir. I cannot prove it. God could use me for a tool of something else and use you the same way. But I believe and by faith I am saved. Amen. Not by knowledge I'm saved. By faith. That's the way you're saved. Amen. That's the way we're all saved. Amen. But remember, God is infinite. Do you believe that? Amen. Infinite. Well, being infinite, that makes Him... Um, and then He's omnit uh, mission. Do you believe that? Omnipotent mission means he knows all things. He can't be he can't be omnipotent mission without being infinite. Amen. See, there never was nothing. Well, what do you know? He knows whatever gnat would ever be on earth, and how many times it would bat its eyes, and how much talent would make, how much all of them make together. He knows whatever breath that you would breathe, and how deep it would go in your lungs. That's infinite. Amen. Amen. Now, if he's infinite, that makes him omnipotent mission. Is that right? And if he's on that mission, that makes him on the present because he knows just exactly the minute, hour, time to the split instance of 55 thousandths of a second of when it's going to happen. Amen. See? Amen. Get the idea now? Amen. Then he knows all things. And that's the reason he has all power, knows all things, and can do all things. Now let's see. Now, and all the children that God, everyone that God 
When, but I remember, when was Jesus, the Bible said, now we know that Jesus was slain about uh, A.D. 30. Is that right? About, it's about the middle uh, of uh, the year, I guess. A.D. 30. Now, but the Bible said that he was slain before the world was ever created. Amen. And your name, when the Lamb's book, when the Lamb was slain to redeem this book, here's a great thing now, it might cause stimulation. Look, when the, when, the, when the Lamb, I remember the Bible said, the Lamb's book of life was written before the foundation of the world. And your name was put in, was in that book, when the Lamb was slain before the foundation of the world to redeem every name that was written in that book. Amen. Eh? You got it now? Amen. See, there ain't nothing out of order. <laughs> it's working just exactly like God's big time beat, see? Like a clock moving right around. Your name was put in there before the foundation of the world when the Lamb was slain to redeem what was in that book. And now He comes forward and takes that book to claim His redemption. I don't want to get started there. We never would answer another question today. All right. Question. Is hell and the lake that burneth with fire and brimstone the same? No. Hell, translation in the Bible, I believe now, the scholar sitting here, and I want to honor that, our brother Iverson sitting here, and brother Nail, and many of these brethren who are really theologians, the word translated... Hades means the grave. Is that right? The Greek word for the grave. But the lake of fire is something else. Because over in Revelations, both Hades and all was cast into the lake of fire. Right. All right. Now, let's see. If not, uh, is the lake of fire hell eternal? No, sir. No, sir. Anything that was created is not eternal. No, anything's created. That's the reason there cannot be an eternal hell. If anybody ever tells you that you're going to burn in an eternal hell, I want the Scripture for him. Okay? There's no such a thing as that. Hell was created for the devil and his angels, for the Antichrist and his people. That was the devil, the incarnate devil. It's created for that to destroy. And anything that ha anything is only one thing at all. Out of everything there is, the whole world and everything else, there's only one thing eternal, and that's God. Amen. Before there was an atom or electrons, or before there was even cosmic light, electrons, or anything, He was God. Amen. He's a creator. And that's the only way you can be eternal is to receive eternal life. That Greek word there, I think, is Zoe. Isn't that right? Zoe? Zoe? And then that, that life God imparts to you as the Father, your Father, imparts His life to you Amen. through the, uh, the marriage vow with the mother. And He, by that, imparts the, the joy of imparting, catch me, of the imparting life for a son. And that's the way God does joy in imparting His life to a son. Amen. See? And then you become... Part of Him, which is Zoe, God's own life, I give unto them eternal life. Raise Him up the last days. That's the only thing that, that you've got eternal life. And that eternal life knows its body and it must have to come forth. That it can, it's impossible for it to lay there. As the Spirit of Christ hovered over the body, God's Spirit over Christ at that great day, it knew it would raise up again. So is the saints in their body. Now remember, Jesus, when He died, He went to hell because He had to go there. He was a sin barrier. And He preached to the souls that were in hell that repented not in the long suffering of the days of Noah. Is that right? Amen. He went to hell and preached to the souls, the separated souls from God. Death means separation. And they had separated from God, never could be back no more. And Jesus went to bear record that He was the one that was spoke of, the, the woman's seed. 
The serpent seed, see what the serpent seed done? Antichrist. Finds up in death, separation of the red horse. The woman seed, life, ends up on the white horse, Jesus Christ. Amen. See? What is it? One against the other. Serpent seed against the woman seed. Amen. You get it now? Amen. Oh, we can stay a little while on that. Wouldn't that be good? But let's stay with this. Brother Branham, does the first horse rider, uh, first seal, fulfill Second Thessalonians, uh, the revelation of the man of sin? Yes. That's right. That does that. Easy. That does. That's the man of sin. The same man just keeps in, in stages, riding on until he gets on a pale horse that's called death. Christ comes on down to from justification and sanctification to the white horse, and that's that life, you see. What happened to the born-again believers who are in the various denominations but not in the bride of Christ? What happens to them? Well, I think we explained that a while ago. See? They go into the tribulation. They are martyred in the tribulation, come up in the last, after the millennium, for their judgment. See? Because the Bible said that the rest of the living, the rest of the dead, lived not until the thousand years was expired. Then there was a resurrection. And then come forth the both just and unjust and was judged by Christ and the bride. He came to the earth with ten thousands times ten thousands of his saints. Is that right? His bride. Judgment was set. The books was open. Books was open and another book was open, which is the book of life. He separated from there the goats from the sheep. Is that right? That had nothing to do with the bride. She was standing right there in judgment with her queen, the queen and king together. He came with his saints. Ten thousands times thousands ministered to him. His wife. Then judgment was set, and then the sheep was separated from the goats. Remember that night, bringing that little meditation so he'd understand the cowboy meditation? See? There you go. No, they are, that's a, the, the, the church, the people that's in denominations that are, are genuine Christians who receives the message and they will never see it. It'll never be preached to them. And those in the mixed crowds who it is preached to, it'll go right over the top of their heads unless your name was on the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. But they will be good people. And they'll be raised up again and given trial and be judged by the very group that preached to them. Don't you know the saints will judge the earth? Amen. They'll be preached to. See? They'll be preached to by the very same people Witness to them of the message. To come out of it. I hope that explains it. I've got so many here. That Brother Branham is the seventh angel with the spirit of Elijah, the same man as the Elijah sent to the 144,000 Jews during the three and a half years after the rapture. Some of us are mixed up in this. No, he isn't the same. See, it's two different men. The Elisha that come in the form of Elijah was not Elijah. And the spirit of Elijah who came up on a man called John the Baptist was not Elijah. And the man of the seventh angel, messenger at the end of the lady of sin age, will not be the literal Elijah. He'll be a Gentile to his people. Elisha will, uh, the spirit of Elisha then coming in the, uh, to the people there, he will be a Jew. See? For they're sent to their own people. That's my revelation, the reason I, uh, of Tommy Osborne, when we talked that over that time. Tommy and I. I never know it. I was just praying for the sick, and I come up there, and there's a lady come down from the Fort Wayne Gospel Tabernacle, a missionary in the foreign fields. Her breast was that big, was just beat up with cancer. And she was right there in the little house where we used to live up here in the lane. And I prayed for the dear sister, and she was healed and returned to the field. And when she come from Africa, and she had left a little book there on missions, I, I thought, well, missionaries are fine. And I 
I've uh, never thought much about missionaries and said, oh, I thought, well, there's just an office of God out there, so that's just my place right here on 8th and Penn Street, so I was just carrying on the best I could. But one day sitting in the study, I picked up that book and had a picture of, a, of the Negro race, an elderly old father, and he had this little white ram of hair, and he, underneath was written like this, white man, white man, where was your father? See? I'm now old and dull at mine, and I don't understand too well. If I would have known Jesus when I was a young man, I would have tucked him to my people. Well, I read it, and something just kept saying, read it again, read it again. I kept reading, oh, you've had them down, read over and over, there's something in there. I got there that day at Green's Mill, when I come out of the cave, I couldn't understand that. Uh, how people could speak with tongues and shout and with a genuine Holy Ghost and still be Antichrist. Speak with tongues with genuine Holy Ghost, uh, tongue speaking and still be a devil. That's right. I can prove that to you. <laughs> yes, indeed. And then, uh, notice, one day, see there, so tongues is no evidence of the Holy Ghost. It's one of the gifts of the Holy Ghost. See? And the devil can impersonate everything he's got. Divine healing and everything else. He said, many will come to me that day and say, Lord, haven't I cast out devils? Have I, that's preaching the gospel. Haven't I done mighty works in your name and all these things there? I'll say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I didn't even know you. The Bible said that the rain falls on the just and the unjust the same. And the same cucklebur standing in the wheat field there can be as happy and shot with the same water that fell upon him as it was sent to the rain. But Amen. by their fruit you know them. Amen. That little old cucklebur can stand up there just as happy and shot as he can be just as full of the same rain that the wheat is. <laughs> there you are. So they can shout, speak with tongues, and impersonate everything you want to, and that they be called workers of iniquity. As I told you a while ago, listen to what I say, listen close. Look back down and examine yourself with the Word and see where you're at. Amen. You women's got short hair, let her grow. Amen. You're wearing shorts, take them off. Amen. Act like a lady. You men still smoking cigarettes around the pool hall, stop it. Amen. I don't care how much you profess. Amen. If you're still holding that organization and saying this is it and this is it, you better stop. Look back down and examine it with the Word. Amen. We're going to come out of we are to live above the short hair and all this age now. We're back into something now that God's revealing the hidden mysteries that have been put on the book before the foundation of the world. And those who have obeyed in these small things will catch it in these other things. If they haven't, it'll go over the top of their head as far as east is from the west. It'll just, like Gideon separating his man, there's thousands and thousands. God said, that's too many. Separate them again. He gave them another test and separate them again, separate them again. And on down to they had a little handful. He said, that's the group I want to do the job. That's exactly what happened. Pentecostal women going back and forth, sitting there hearing and knowing about the word that's wrong. You think they'll cope with it? No, sir. Every year when I pass by, there's more with Bob there. And it wasn't so. Say, what's that got to do? You order. Someone said, well, Brother Brown, people regard you as a prophet. No, I don't say I was a prophet. Nobody hears me to say that. But I say this. That if uh, if you did do that, if you guard it, so why don't you teach people how to receive the Holy Ghost and how to get this and how to get great spiritual gifts and help the church? How can I teach them algebra when they won't even listen to their ABCs? Amen. That's right. You do these little things. Get down here at the bottom and brush it off and start right. Amen. Amen. All right. What was I talking about, anyhow? <laughs> I didn't even get off that subject. Excuse me. See. All right. Some of the, some of us are mixed up. Is the Elijah the same as the? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. No. This Elijah that will come to the Gentiles will be a Gentile anointed with that spirit because God used that same spirit to bring His people out of chaos every time and has served His purpose well, so He comes right back down again to call. See, because now if He uses a high, polished, educated, that's the kind it would catch. He brings a man that hardly knows his ABCs and can't pronounce his words right and everything like that, some old wilderness, something out there somewhere, and brings it in and shows right down to that simple-minded people and to get it like that. <laughs> Did it come and call it? Like Paul said, I didn't come to you with the polish of an education, but I come to you in the power of the resurrection. It taken God three and a half years down in Arabia there to knock it out of him, his education. Took, took him 40 years to get it out of Moses. See? 
So there you are. That's, I don't say God don't, I'm not supporting illiteracy now, but I'm, I'm trying to tell you, don't take your education, don't, the wisdom of this world is contrary. Education has been the biggest hindrance that the gospel's ever had. Amen. If we didn't have education, we'd have all these big seminaries and things that we got now. It'd be people simple-minded who would listen to the word. Amen. But they're so polished and messed up and tightened up out there with all them organizations so that they're going to stay with it. That's all. Amen. They take on that spirit. Did you ever take a good woman, marry into a low-down man? That low-down man either becomes a a good man like the woman is or the woman becomes low down as he is. See? That's right. That's why he said, come out from among them when I'm getting ready to take that rapture. You've got to have some kind of faith that will take you out of here. Amen. When was the covenant of Daniel 9.27 confirmed for a week? One half of it was confirmed, the covenant, when Jesus Christ was on earth preaching to the Jews. He never went to the Gentiles at all. And he told his disciples, don't go to the Gentiles. That was to Jews alone, see? And he preached for three and a half years. That's half of the 70 week. Now, as Daniel said he would do, now remember, he was firmly vindicated to the Jews, but their eyes were blinded to bring in this space of the Gentiles. Can't you see the whole program? Yeah. See? And he proved himself a prophet, done just exactly what the prophet would do, Show them the sign of a prophet which your own word said. If a man says he's spiritual a prophet, watch what he says. And if it comes to pass, just keep on coming to pass. Amen. What he said, Amen. continually. Amen. Like you're looking, the Bible said, knock, it'll be open. Seek, find, uh, ask to be given. Now, if you notice, it's knock us. Just constantly knock, stay right there. Like the unjust uh, judge wouldn't answer a woman, he's kept knocking on her door. I'm on your hand. Not seek, say, Lord, I'd like to have this. Amen. That's not it. Stay right there until you get it. Amen. You know it's going to come, so he promised it, so just stay right there until you hold on to it. Now, now in the last part, the 70th week, the last part of it, will be during the time of the tribulation period at the rapture of the church. Then here's the three and a half years here that it will be confirmed to them again by prophets. See, Moses and Elijah, Revelations 11. Now, let's see what this is. If you are one of his chosen ones, will you go up in the bride? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, that's easy. Brother Branham, did you mean to say 7,000 who had not bowed their knee to Balaam or 700? 7,000, I meant to say. Forgive me for that, see. Just a, it's just a, a matter of speech. I was just, like I said a while ago, you know me standing here, and I said, and, and they bear record seeing the Lamb. See? See? The Lamb was on earth. See? Bear record seeing the Spirit of God coming up on the Lamb. Now, in there it says, This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. You see? Now, that's wrote in the actual form of the Greek, but the verb for adverb, but you notice here, and actually be this. Now, let's take the word. See, the Bible says, in the translation of St. James here, this is my beloved Son in whom I'm pleased to dwell. But actually, if we'd say, like we said today, this is my beloved Son in whom I'm pleased to dwell in. You turn it around, see? see? This is my beloved Son in whom I'm pleased to dwell. See? Now, we'd say today, this is my beloved Son in whom I am pleased to dwell in. See? Same word, just turns it around. See? Now, yes, I meant, forgive me, please. I, and, and brethren, you on the tape out there and friends, listen, I didn't mean to say that like that. I, I, I'm a minister of the gospel. I, many times I've preached that. I know that was 7,000. I just happened to say 700. I didn't mean just 700. I meant... Uh, you, uh, I just didn't read it out of the scripture. It just come to my mind while I was talking, and I just said seven hundred instead of seven thousand. I make them mistakes all the time. I'm, I'm a sure a, a dummy. So you forgive me. See, I don't mean to do that. Uh, is the bride of Christ and the body of Christ the same? Yes, sir. See, now here. I uh, see. I don't want to get started. Don't cause to get us preach a sermon on. See, but I won't do that. But I won't show you when. God gave Adam his bride from his side. 
He said, she is flesh of my flesh and bone of my bone. Is that right? When God gave Christ his bride, the Spirit gave the flesh, the bride, he was plucked, pierced in the side under his heart, and water, blood, and spirit came forth. That become flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone. We are the flesh and bones, the bride will be, the flesh and bones of Christ, exactly. They are the, that is his bride. Would the bride of Christ have, would the bride of Christ have a ministry before the rapture? Sure. That's what's going on right now. Okay. The bride of Christ, certainly. It is the message of the hour. Amen. Okay. The bride of Christ. Sure, she's consist of apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, and pastors. Is that right? Amen. That's the bride of Christ. Sure, she's got a ministry. Great ministry. The ministry of the hour. It'll be so humble. Now, I remember, how many were sure at the first one on uh, last Sunday, see? Remember what I preached on? Humility. Oh, don't forget that. I'm going to stop a minute to warn that again. Remember, when God predicts anything great to happen, the people are looking so far away by their wisdom till they miss what happens. When God says anything is great, the world laughs at it. That bunch of ignoramuses. That's right. But when the great world, the great high church said, boy, that's glorious, God says a bunch of ignoramuses. So see, you have to watch. I don't mean it maybe of that way, exactly that way, but that's the way it is. Look, here was a great holy orthodox church. We know the word. We've got schools. we got seminaries. we got our men so polished. Why, for hundreds of years, we've been loyal to Jehovah. We are the church. We're the Sanhedrin. we got the council of churches here, both Pharisees and Sadducees, all the denominations gathered up together like we're getting. We're all in one, uh, the, uh, the council of church. We are the big shots here. We know that scripture. What's some little eager guy down there on the river with a beard hanging over his face and a piece of sheepskin telling us? Certainly they wouldn't listen to it. Amen. But the Bible said in Malachi, the, fourth cha- the third chapter, I'll send my messenger before my face to prepare the way for me. Amen. 712 years before that, jo- oh, the great prophet of Isaiah stood there and said, there will be a voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord and make his path straight. That's right. And said, and Dave, oh, many of them said, every high place will be brought down. Amen. Amen. Oh, they said, there'll be a, when this man comes, he'll point his finger and he'll move mountains. <laughs> oh, and all the low places, the ditches will be brought up. Then all it's all the rough places will be smoothed out. Brother, we'll plant corn every field around here. Oh, we're going to do great things when this man comes. See? They're expecting God to take the crank and turn on, bring the corner down, and say, Come on down, you great forerunner of, of my Messiah. And then as soon as he's gone, they pull it back up, his ministry's over, they crank it down again and put it right down here beside the seminary and say, All right, my beloved son, walk down and tell him. Hmm? Oh, my. Look when he comes by. What did happen? Here come a man that knowed none other school. Didn't even have a fellowship card. Huh. Didn't have no credentials. Huh. No. Nobody ever knowed he ever went to school a day in his life. He couldn't even tell it by his talking. He didn't even talk in terms of a of Ecclesiastes. He talked about serpents, axes, and wilderness, and, and uh, things like that. See? Dreams. He talked not in the terms of the ecclesiastical uh, set of the day or this day or any other day. Amen. He come sassafras, as we call it here in Indiana. <laughs> he come out of the bushes somewhere. Didn't even have a shave. And the hair standing out on his head. I don't imagine he'd take the bath once they were two or three months. You're right. He never wore pajamas at night. He never rode an automobile. <laughs> He never brushed his teeth. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> what a guy this one. <laughs> Certainly not. Here he comes stomping out through the wilderness like that. He said, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord to make the praise path. Some of the teacher students said, huh. Say, fella, have you got your 
We can't cooperate with you in this campaign. Here, we can't do this. Well, where's your, where's your card? Where's your identification? <laughs> he just ignored him. He had a message, so he just went on. Preaching just the same. They said, oh, wait, well, if we go down there, we'll take the bishop down today and see what he says about it. We go down there. And we know that's the heads of the church. And we know that he'll have to recognize that. If he's of God, he'll recognize our bishops. Put them all down in a row and set them out there, the dignitaries. He said, you generation of vipers, you snakes in the grass. <laughs> Collars turned around and holy fathers and so forth. And, Who are you to flee from the wrath to come? You know your hour's at hand. Don't you think that you say, well, we belong to this other... I'll tell you, the God that I serve is able to rise children of Abraham out of these stones. <laughs> oh, my. Now he's going to take up his uh, uh, vice versa from ecclesiastical speech. I say the axe is laid to the root of the tree. Therefore, every tree that don't bring forth good fruit is cued down, cast into the fire. Amen. Oh, I need to baptize you with water and to repentance, but he's coming after me. The moon will be turned into the... Oh, my. He will fairly purge his floors and he'll take the, uh, the chaff and he'll burn it with unquenchable fire and he'll take the wheat to the garn. He'll separate the weeds and the wheat. Oh, my, what a message. They said, this guy? <laughs> what did he say? What, what, what time it was? Oh, ignorance. We got the man right up there. Brother Jones, he's the guy who'll do that. If there's anybody in this thing. <laughs> Bishop so-and-so will do it. Holy Father so-and-so. Oh, my. See, God in simplicity. <laughs> Working in simplicity. Then, first thing you know, he's standing there one day, and he said, Yes, he's standing in your midst. He was so sure he was that runner. He knew who he was. Amen. That's the reason he could shake the hide off of him. Amen. He said, Now don't tremble, but just go ahead and continue on. You soldiers, you obey your masters. If you've done any evil, you take that. What should we do? Should we quit uh, doing this? Should we stop doing this? He said, Just go on like you are. Continue on. Continue on. Go ahead. If you're raising potatoes, raise them. You soldiers don't do no violence and, and you do this and whatever we do. Just continue on as you are. Obey your masters and so forth. Rabbi, what should we do? Just continue on as you are. See? But there's one in your midst that you don't know. He know that the hour of his message, he knowed he was to introduce that person. Amen. He knowed he was there. One in your midst you don't see. Him. Things are going on you know nothing about. Amen. And uh, so then, uh, there's something going to happen, he says, you see. And he'll be here, and I'll know him. And finally, one day, he said, Behold, there he is. There's the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And my time's up now. I've introduced you to him. I must decrease now. I must go off the scene. He'll take over from here. The millennium will be on. And I'll let you see. And, uh, the time is hand. And then when he comes, when even John said he's going to, oh, he's going to shut the hide off. He's going to, he's going to separate the wheat from the from the chaff, and he's going to burn it up, and he's going to thoroughly purge his floors, and his fan is in his hand. But what it was, he? little bitty. Now they had all drawn up. Oh man, he'll have a spear reach a mile long. He'll stand back over here in Palestine. He'll stand up there just on one of these white clouds and pick up all these Romans like this and cast them into hell. Just keep on doing like that. See? They get them all over. Well, they have that all fixed up. And what it was? A little lamb come moving out of money. Meek and gentle, pushed around this way and that way. Amen. Even John said, now look at John the prophet. He said, go ask him. Is actually he the one? <laughs> so humble to that prophet, mister. He said, is he the one or do we seek for another? <laughs> now, he never gave him a book when them disciples and, and Matthew 11 come to ask him when John's disciple. John is in prison, so he'd been all so sh- scrupled up to his, uh, I believe his Pimmerman said it, his eagle eye got filmed over down there. You see. He could, he'd, he'd done come down to the earth. He'd been up in the air, but when his prophecy was over, he dropped back down to the ground again. See, he put him in prison. You see, he didn't have no use for them big wings anymore, so he just... Laid down there, but he flew higher than any of the rest of them. Let me show you something. <laughs> God used him. And Jesus knew, you see, because that, that was the incarnate God there. See? He was, so he, he said there, 
He said, and I never gave him a book on how to behave himself in jail. He said, now, wait a minute, I'll write a little essay here. You take back and tell John how to behave himself when he's in jail for my sake, see. No, he never said that. He didn't say, go tell John that uh, he ought to have got his Ph.D. degree before he come out and get... If he would have been arrested, he'd have been a rejecter. John was honest and asked the question. And he said, just wait till the meeting's over, and then go show John what happened, then he'll know. If you tell him what's going on, then he'll know. See? See? Amen. Just go let him tell him tell him he's in prison and couldn't be here, but but you sat in the meeting and you see what happened, you go tell him. Amen. So then the disciples said, Very well, Master, and over the hill he went. Jesus sitting on this rock, just watched him till he crossed over and went up over the hill. He turned out the congregation and said, um, who, who'd you go out to see at the time of John? Yeah. <laughs> So what went you out to see? Did you go out to see a man that's got his collar turned around and soft clothes and highly polished and educated? Is that the kind of man you went out to see? No. You know what them kind of are? They kiss the babies. And, you know, and work in king's palaces. They, they, that's not the type of John. But. Well, so then why'd you go to see a man that's been given a ministry and hook it right into an organization or something like that, shake him with ever? Then if the... If the one that's don't want him, you'll go over to the trinity. If the trinity don't want him, you go to the church of God anywhere. Is that kind of man you want to see shake with any reed? Oh, no. Not John. <laughs> he said, then what did you go to see? A prophet? He said, and I say that's right. But I'm going to tell you something that you don't know. He was more than a prophet. Amen. He was more. If you can receive it, this is who that was written up in the Bible. See? Back there in Scripture, I'll send my messenger before my face. Malachi 3. And he had prepared the way before me. See, and they didn't understand. Even the disciples didn't get it. See? Amen. That's right. Oh, my simplicity. Be humble. Yeah. See? Go right down. When God promises something big, see, it is big in His sight. Now, if you want to always keep this in mind, I want you to, you keep this in mind, and when this happens, then you can change it. You reach down and pick up one of these little spring flowers that's coming this year. Or get a common blade of grass and hold it in your hand and say, I'm going to hold this now and see that something so simple has made this. Now I want to see the brain that can send a rocket to the moon make this blade of grass. Hallelujah. You'll always have it. <laughs> you can rest assured on that. You'll always have it. See? A blade of grass has life in it. See? It's so simple and humble. You see, if a man is a big man, all right. But if he's big enough, he can become simple. That's right. Amen. See, he'll find God. But if you don't become simple, he'll never see you. So you've got to become simple. Now, verse in Revelations verse 5 and 9, who are these found singing, singing when the Lamb takes the book out of the... Out of the takes the book, or, or are these the raptured saints? No. Revelations uh, uh, 6, uh, 5, and 9, rather? No. If you notice, these are not the saints. They have, he has never claimed his property yet. See? This is not the saints. If you notice, they're the elders and the beast. And they sing. Let's read it. So that person, and then I'm going to try. I've got about half a dozen more here, and I think I can get them in a few minutes. Let's see. Revelations 5. And now, now, let's read just a little bit before him. So the person now is honest about this, and they want to know what. And when he had taken the, uh, taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps, golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sang a new song. See? See? <coughs> Saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open it. See? Thou hast redeemed us and made us priests and kings. That's the heavenly group, not yet the redeemed. All right. Now, Brother Branham, if all the... Just a moment. I guess... Oh, pardon me. Brother Branham, if if all the godly, yeah, godly be taken up in the rapture, where will Elijah and the uh, and Moses come from? There's something wrong. 
there's something wrong. <laughs> That's all there is to it. They, they, something's happened. See? There's something that went wrong somewhere. Everybody feeling all right? There's no, yeah. there's no sickness in Read that line for us again in Revelation 5. Yeah. Let's see, Revelation 4, was it, brother? Uh, five. five. The, oh, the question. Oh, the question is answered. Now let's see. Thou, and when he had opened the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seal thereof. For thou hast was slain. And here it is. Here it is. I was wrong on that. See? Thou hast redeemed us to God by the blood of ever can. That's right. Amen. Now, what do you think about that? <laughs> oh, if the presence of the Holy Ghost isn't here, what is? Amen. Amen. He wouldn't let... See, I only read the first part of that verse. Yeah. See, it's just, it's just a ver, uh, something wrote here and I was trying to get through looking at that clock. But you see him stop me on that? Amen. Glory. Amen. I never read the other part of that. See, I got here and... Look here. And they, and they sang a new song. Now stop. See? But look here, the song they sang saying, We have redeemed us out of every kinder tongue and nation. Sure, that's them. Oh, my, oh, my. See it? And by the way, there's another question down here, too. Could you... Uh, C-O-N-T-R-O. Control those given... Or control those given white robes of Revelation 6.11 with those who wash their robes in the blood of the Lamb. Now, see, Revelation 6... I just can't hurry on this, folks. I it's a, see the cause. It's going. I'm going to answer something wrong, and he didn't like. He didn't want me to do that. That's the truth. So help me, the Holy Spirit of God knows that's the truth. See, I just there's something. Just I, I looked at. I looked at that clock, eleven thirty. I thought if I don't hurry up now, I won't get to pray for the sick. And I'm, I'm trying to get that because I, in my mind, is so. Uh, I can't. You remember, you just have to understand. Now, I'm, I'm a human, see, and I, I've been in there for seven days, and my and I got something yet this afternoon. I've got to find from God, but He was so determined that I wouldn't make that error. They called me back to read the rest of that verse. I just it just felt like something just rolled over me there and said, "Go back, go back." I thought, "Go back what? Stop right now, start praying for the sick." Uh, what, what is it? What have I done? And just to start to reach for that, somebody said, read the verse over again. And I read it over in there at the bottom of this question. There it was. See? Revelation 6. See, I read the first. That does sound like it. The first. See? And they sang a new song. But down here, see what it was? The next coming on down has redeemed us. Sure it was the bride. The raptured saint. Uh, could you... And here, certainly... The, the lamb had the book in his hand. He done left the throne of me to the order of grace. See? You see how the Holy Spirit watches that? Because exactly that's the same thing I said the other night when he had talked to me in the room and I come down here and preach to you all that when the lamb left the place. Oh, my. Now I believe we just take a text. See? The lamb had left his seat and come forth. See? As I got up there when he was present that light, which is Christ, when he was present, told me when the Lamb leaves that seat uh, of the throne to uh, be a mediator, he becomes out here, and the day of redemption for the church is finished. Amen. The next redemption is opened as far as the Jews, 144,000. Is that right? Because he promised he cut the tree off. You know. Now here, now here he comes out the Lamb, and then the day of redemption is finished and all that's going to be redeemed has already been redeemed and put on the book and he's out here opening the book. Yeah. Right. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. Forgive thy nervous servant for trying to run over something. Now, could you tolerate those given white robes of Revelation 6, 11? Now, let's see, 6 and 11. All right, where are we at on this now? White robes, yeah, that's the the crucified under the altar, the 
the Jews between that time, they were given white robes, with those who washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb of Revelation 7, 14. No, now that is different, sure enough. Of course, see, here we find out here that these were given white robes over here, and this time they were given white robes themselves by grace, and these here had washed their robes in the blood. And over in Revelations over here, this is that great multitude that come up before God of all kindred tongues and nations, and these are directed exactly to the martyrs of the Jews. Now, now that is correct. Now, Brother Branham, if all of the godly was taken up in the rapture, where will the uh, Elijah and Moses come from? Will they be Jews, or will our Elijah given to us be be with them no the uh, the a Gentile that'll be anointed with this spirit to call out the Gentiles will be taken away cause you see the whole church all has been taken up and these two prophets of of the 11th chapter is brought down and the day of grace is ended with the Gentile and been sent to the Jews no it won't be the same man I'm pretty sure of that. I remember these are just the best of my knowledge. Let's see what this is. There's a question. Does uh, wheat and wine... Oh, W-H-E-A-T... No. I guess it, it meant what does. It doesn't have the what there. It just says does the uh, what and wine, or wheat and wine. What does the... Uh, of Revelation 6, 6. I see how it is when I get down here now. Let me see it. And I heard a voice in the midst of four beasts saying, A measure of wheat for a penny and a measure of barley for a penny. See, thou hurt not the wine or... I guess that's mean the wheat and the wine. That was one to the other. Revelation assembled the wine taken at the communion table of Rev, uh, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty four. Does the wine the uh, wine, no, one of them is a spiritual symbol, see, uh, and the other is actually the, the revelation of the Word. Could it be that the reason many are sick because we did not discern the Lord's body, correct, but now revealed by the opening of the sixth seal? Let me see if I can get the... Now, it's not you, it's me. You, didn't, you wrote it all right, it's just me. Could it be that the reason many are sick uh, because we do not discern the Lord's body? That's I got a question mark at the end of that. Well, the Scripture says that many are sick and weakly among you because of the discerning of the Lord's body. That's exactly right because, see, the Lord's body is a bride and many of them go off and they don't go with it, that's true. See, they don't know how to behave themselves, live any kind of a life, and take communion and things. That's not right. See? When people take communion that lie and steal and drink, and that, that's, that's terrible. You shouldn't do that. See? Uh, but now, revealed by the opening of the sixth seal. The opening of the sixth seal. Let's see now. No. Now, you find out the sixth seal uh, opening here was to the Jews. See? The, the church is done gone. This is a tribulation period. So it wouldn't be the same. No. No, it isn't. One of them is a spiritual line. That's uh, 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 the revelation of the Word. Then the, the believer becomes uh, stimulated by the revelation of the Word. The other is a symbol of the blood of Jesus that's taken at the Lord's table. Now that's the best of my understanding of it. Will any that are not predestinated except the Lord, if they do, will they fall away? Not if they're predestinated, no. They couldn't. Where is the scripture that shows that the uh, Catholicism will uh, de deceive the Jews and get their wealth? Now, as far as it's saying that, that, that uh, the beast will deceive for the wealth, it doesn't say that. But we're presuming that that was... Now, the other night, you remember, you looked at the tape real close. I never said that's what they would do. I said, see, the Catholics is the richest group in the world. Right. Nobody like them. Right. And what they don't have, the Jews has the rest. That's, right. that's where the economics of this country now, 
We're right now living on tax money, according to Lifeline, that will offer taxes that's come right from Washington, D.C., that'll be paid in 40 years from today. That's what we're spanning now. That's how far back we are, giving notes, see, on taxes that will be paid in 40 years from now. The nation is broke. She's done. Now, Castro, the only sensible thing that he ever done was when he counterfeited the currency, he paid off the notes, the bonds, and burned <laughs> and changed the currency. That's the only thing he could do. And there's only one thing left for this United States to do. Now, remember, this is William Branham see, speaking. This is my idea. It's only for Sumi. Just looking at it in the natural standpoint, which may be a million miles off. I do believe it right there in that money. The love of money is the root of all evil. Amen. And I believe it right along in there will start the ball rolling. Amen. Now, the Catholic Church back there from charging from mass and so forth holds the wealth of the world. You remember the Bible said she was rich in how she was? And remember, not only just on one nation, she's rich on every nation there is under heaven. Amen. She reaches out. Right. She has the money. Now, what they don't have, Wall Street has, which is controlled by the Jews. Right. <laughs> now, and you remember, he got the money when Jacob returned last night. We find out and become Israel. He really had the money. <laughs> but his money wouldn't buy him nothing. See, to Esau. Esau had it too. See, both anti and, and the one kind. See, it's just it's perfectly. Now, watch here. I said they might want to consolidate together on the money and the... Uh, and the Roman power take the Jewish power and uh, money breaking the covenant. That might not be so. See, I know they'll break it, but I, I don't know what reason because it's not revealed to me about what they'll do. But um, look, now, if the day, now what if the day, the only thing that we can do would be to do, if we're drawing taxes, if that statement is right, off of the currency, off of the tax money of 40 years from now, you see, our gold is... We've done spending. Amen. We're broke. That's right. We don't have any money. And we're only living off of a past reputation. That's what the church is doing today. The church, not the bride. The church is living off of a past reputation. It got back under, under the ministry of the lion time. We are the church. We are the mother church. We started... As, uh, that's right, see? It's living off a of reputation. Methodists is living off of their reputation. Baptists are living off of their reputation. And Pentecost are living off of theirs. Yeah. Glory to God. A long time ago when the saints used to dance in the Spirit and how they, the Lord done this and that, that that's something past. We all got big now, brother. Yeah. Oh, my. See, all past reputation. Yeah. This nation is living off of a past reputation of what the forefathers was. See? And that's the reason we think we'll be saved. God never respected Israel on what they was what they had been, what they was then. Notice. But now, here's what I think, what I, I think will take place. Now, it may not be so. I believe the time will come when we're forced to make the issue. And when it will be that instead of us uh, changing the currency, what would that do to the Philip Morris? What would that do to the the whiskey companies? Yeah. What would that do to the steel industry? What would that do to all the commerce? What would that... It would break them. They'd be broke. But if we can borrow that money... See how smart he is? Then the nation sells out to the church. And that church and state is united again. And there she comes. That's it. Notice, all right, now, in, in this, if one is in an uh, association organization by our government and can speak the um, dictates of his own heart or in the last day's truth, will he be termed as one of the harlots? If one in the association organization is... Well, see, the association organization, uh, the, the organization that's given rights by the government to speak, see, that don't have anything to do with his heart. See? Now, if he is a real believer and born of the Spirit of God, 
sometime or other he's going to be checked. It can't be so plain and then him not see it. Now, all you, see, you want to remember this, friend, that God, God never does, it has at any time as I can remember, see? But what, look, Jesus was a, was a keynote of all of it because he was God, Emmanuel, made flesh. Now, look at this, this fellow, Jesus. When, did you know when he come on earth, there wasn't, I guess, one-tenth of the world know he was here? You know, when that forerunner come, when all the mountains and things that take place, there wasn't one-hundredth of the population of Israel, I guess, ever known. Isn't that strange? Well, there were Jews and things and people all over the world. I remember Jesus came to be a witness as a Savior of the world. Is that right? Amen. Well, there were just people after people after people after races after people that never even know nothing about it. Went right on just like the world know nothing about it. But all the time that was going on in the world. Amen. See? Why didn't he let them know? He came and the ones that were predestinated to eternal life was the ones that received him. Amen. There'd been no good to say anything to the rest of them because he could not have redeemed them because it wasn't even redeemable. Why was it when those priests stood there, when he had to come to that spot, because the predestinated was plotted out in there, all around. So he had to preach to them as a group. And the great scholars that should have known him said, this man is Beelzebub. We'll not have this man rule over us and so forth, see. We'll not do it. But a little old prostitute with a life in her, predestinated to eternal life, and her name is immorally in the Word of God here, Walked up there, and the first time that light struck that little scene, quickly she knowed it. Amen. Look at the old fisherman come by there. Here he stood there doing signs and wonders and, and telling different people the secrets of their hearts and revealing himself. And my, there was Pharisees standing there and said, This man is Beelzebub. They had to answer to their congregation. All of them standing around, Dr. Jones, will you go down and listen to this man? He, he seems like he knows what he's talking about. He don't talk like ordinary men. I will hear him. Walk down there, see what God, God can never get to him. Amen. And there he stood down there and said, They said, Oh, look at there. Look at there. There comes a man there. There's one of his disciples. There comes a man up. Now, now that's God's name. Uh, that's Andrew. You remember? Oh, you remember the old uh, uh, the old fisherman's down here? That's Sam. Yeah, that, that's Simon, his brother, see? And that's that's old Jonas's kids. Now, there they, look, he's, he's bringing somebody up to him. Who is it? Yeah. See what he'll do now. He's, he's the next up there. And he walks up and said to him, your name is Simon, and you are the son of Jonas. Amen. This man is Beelzebub. See, he's got some kind of a spirit on him. He's an odd fellow. See, swear don't, don't you all listen to nothing like that. See, keep away from me. I wouldn't attend any more of these meetings at all. See, as soon as this thing's over, we'll get out of here. Yeah. We'll never get away around here again. See, wow. Now that's what he thought, and yet was supposed to be the one. Look, the very ones that he come to was the ones who crucified him. Amen. Amen. But there's a little prostitute that everybody kicked out. Amen. I'm not endorsing prostitution. No, indeed. But I'm just showing you a predestinated seed. Amen. Look at this guy here, this old fisherman. Could not even, the Bible said he was unlearned. Is that right? Amen. Not only that, but he was ignorant. Amen. <laughs> now, is that right or wrong? Amen. 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 Oh, if we could just get eager to, to a lot of these things that we think we know. Amen. All right, see, he was both ignorant and unlearned. And then he walked up there in the presence of the Lord Jesus, and he told him he was, right then that settled it. Amen. Now, what's this other fellow's argument against that? Well, look, he believed it. But look who it is. You know who that is? Well, that man never, why, why he's a fisherman. Oh, you don't know his ABC. I bought fish from him. He couldn't even sign me a receipt. That, see, that's the kind of stuff, that's the kind of people that listen to something like that. Praise Thank the Lord. Lord. Amen. 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 Well, well, you don't. Look at his dad. He's ignorant. He didn't even send him to school. But that's the one he sent to school. Amen. Taught the way he wanted to. I'm not supporting not going to school now. I hope you understand. But there's just a type. See, what you get in that, that's the kind of the reason it goes over the top of them, and you know what? Not one, I'd say not one-third of all the Jews in the land ever knowed anything about him coming. 
And and then one one fifth of the one third listened to him, and then one hundredth of the one fifth received it. Amen. You know how many he had? He had twelve standing at the cross out of the whole bunch. Where's the rest of them? Amen. The seventy went away. Now while he was healing the sick and just going down, not saying nothing about his doctrine, he just went ahead healing the sick and everything. Oh my! That's God's spirit on him. You believe that? Yeah. When he was healing the sick, wonderful. That's a great rabbi. Say, hey, brethren, you are in heaven, your church. Boy, you talk about power. That guy can really heal the sick. You you got a gift of healing. Well, of course, they're going to ask him in First Nations. Then. Here they come along because each group's got to have his own man. Here he comes. And then the first thing you know, one day he sat down. Oh, sure, rabbi, we'll go with you. All right, sit down. Let's go. All right, sent out the 70 and so forth. And one day, after a great miracle was done, he sat down and began to tell them the word. Yeah. At the beginning of the sounding of the... All right. He began to tell them the word, the truth. Is, ah, now wait a minute. Amen. I don't know about this. Yeah. It's contrary to their doctrine. See, well... I know we left the synagogue and everything like that, but maybe we was wrong, brother. We better go back, because that man talks in riddles. He's kind of an odd fellow. I can't understand that. See, why was it? The seed wasn't predestined. Yeah. Yeah. Started. Then the first thing you know, he had a little ministerial group and talked to the ministers. They said, ah, hmm. We better go back to it and go back and get in the organization, take up our papers again. See, go, this guy, well, who can understand a man like that? He says this year and says this over here. Uh, their mothers didn't understand it like that. Amen. <laughs> he was sure in riddles to some of them, but not to the others. Amen. So they walked away. Amen. Then he turned around and looked at 12, standing there and said, You want to go too? <laughs> now watch. Hallelujah. Peter said, You know what? I tainted that old place down there all that time. Where in the world would I go to? <laughs> Where would I go? Oh, where, where could I go? After I've done a year of work, uh, I can't go back to that garbage can. Again. We're all kind of slop of the world's laying in it. I, I, where will I go to? I, I just can't do it. He said, then, all right, come on, go along. <laughs> now, there you are. See, how was that then? Twelve out of about two and a half million. And if the Savior of the world, out of billions, get humble. See, you stay humble. Watch now, with all them Pharisees and that little prostitute come up there, she said, Say, you must be a prophet. Now, we know that Messiah's coming. When he comes, he'll do that. He said, I'm he. She said, That's it. <laughs> the way she went. You try to stop her once. You couldn't do it. Brother Branham's greetings in the name of, of the Lord Jesus. Please explain who the man in Matthew 22, 11, the man that didn't have on a wedding garment, wedding garment on, I know this man... Could, couldn't get into heaven without the wedding garment on. This was a guest, I know, not the bride. Yes, that's right. He would be a guest. Yeah, he just slipped in. See? Now look. Now, I, I, I take a whole sermon on that. Now I got <laughs> ten minutes to pray for the sick and finish this up. And I've got one half of them done. Again. No, but I'm, I'm going to hurry right sure enough after this. See? Here's what happened. If you know the oriental customs, see, when a bridegroom gives out invitations for his wedding, he just gives out so many invitations. And for every invitation he sent, he had a porter stand at the door to put a robe on him, whether he was poor or whatever he was, he had, if he was rich or poor or whatever it was, he all had to wear this wedding garment. When they stood at the door, they put this on him. They covered up what he's outside the bin. He's invited. Where's the millionaire? Where's the parper? Where's the farmer, ditch digger, whatever he is, or, or plutocrat? He's, he's here with the robe on. Now, because the robe's put on him at the door when he enters in at the door. Now, I take St. John 10, I believe it is. He said, I am the door. Amen. See? I am the door that you enter, enter in by. Now, there he stands at the door, and here's the man to put the robe on him, the Holy Spirit. To give him the robe of righteousness when he comes in. Now this man had come by some organization. Back at the window over here. Amen. Some slip-in hole. And he got into the table and sat down. And then when the bridegroom comes up and looks around, he's a, he, 
These have been odd ducks before, now he's the odd duck. <laughs> what you doing here like that without the baptism of the Holy Ghost and all these things? How did you ever get in here? Well, uh, he come in somewhere besides the door, and he come without the proper invitation. Okay? He come by some educational system. Okay? Or something like that. He got in, and he said to him, Bind him, hand and feet. Cast him out of here. Into outer darkness, where there will be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. He went into the tribulation period. Right. He did not come in by the door. So, all right. Question. Will the Elijah of Malachi 4 be the same as Elijah mentioned in Revelations 11, 3? And is the other witnesses, um, as other two witnesses, separate, uh, individuals separate? Yes. The Elijah of Malachi 4 will not be the Elijah of Malachi 3. We went through that last night. And is the other witness separate, two of them? Yes, sir, Moses and Elijah, to our revelation. Now, I don't want to hold you here too long. First Kings 19, Brother Branham, I believe that the number who did not bow the knee was, se- yeah, that's right, 700 instead of, thank you, that's correct. It was 700 instead of 7,000. Brother, <laughs> 7,000 instead of 700. I see that? You know, really, when a person comes like this to, to preach, I want to ask you something. That's what you'll understand. When the Elijah came from the wilderness, he had one message. He stomped out of that wilderness and come right down and told that king that dew will not even fall from heaven till I call for it. That's the words he had and stomped right back out and set up into nobody. Amen. See? Amen. When he had another message, he come right down and said this message and turned right back around and went back out into the wilderness. Amen. See? Amen. Now, if you watch, when I laid the cornerstone in that tabernacle, he said, do the work of an evangelist. And now the hour is coming when that work is separated. Amen. There's something else taking place. Amen. Amen. Then I'm so con- See, I get here and try to do evangelists and something else and see where you're at. Yeah. See, you're all... I, I'm expecting the church to be spiritual enough Amen. to understand. Amen. Amen. Brother Branham, I understand that Elias must be three times. You tell us that he has been twice already and will come again. Now, will the person that the spirit of Elias will be upon also be of the two witnesses of Moses and Elias? No. No. He will be a Gentile. See, to the Gentile church, God sends always to his own people. See, He came to his own, his own received him. He always sends his, the message of the hour. When God was dealing with the Jews, it wasn't any Gentile prophets come. When God's dealing with the Gentiles, there's no Jewish prophets. When God turns back to the Jews, there'll be no Gentile prophets. See, see what I mean? Yeah. All right. Amen. After the rapture has taken place, uh, there will be a carryover time. Of course, one message carrying to the other, it has to come right in like this. You see, as I explain that, see, like Paul to the Gentiles and so forth. All right. After the rapture has been taken place, will any of the church be saved in the end who was not uh, taken in the rapture? No. Uh-uh, because the blood's done left. You see, there'll be no intercession. The Gentile age is finished. There'll be no one saved after the rapture in another church. Uh-uh. The church, let him that's filthy be filthy still, him that's holy be holy still. That won't take place. Not after the church is gone. Brother Branham, I noticed you, you're referring to Daniel 70 weeks on the first seal message. I understand on Daniel, on the tape of Daniel, when the gospel returns to the Jews, the 70 weeks will begin. Is there a... One, 70, uh, one week, seven years left for the Jews, or yet is there only one half week, one, three and a half years left for them? Only one half week. Jesus prophesied the first half week, as was predicted. Only one half week left for them. <clears throat> Brother Bram, since you didn't pray for the sick during the week, will you? Oh, that's just a request for that. Brother Branham. Will you see me after the... Sir, that's the request, Cedar. 
Would you uh, please explain about Satan being bound a thousand years and being loose for the battle of battle of Revelation 28? What relationship does this have with the battle of Armageddon, uh, as mentioned in the fourth seal? Will Gog and Magog be gathered from the people of the new earth? Well. This is a long one, and I, I just have to hit the spot. Of it. See, now the first thing will uh, maybe I can't explain it. I'll do my best. Will you please explain how Satan is bound a thousand years, being loosed again for the battle of Revelations twenty and eight? That is not the battle of Armageddon. The battle of Armageddon takes place on this side. See, all right, at um, when the tribulation period is in. Now, uh, what relation does this have with the battle of Gog and Magog? None. One is this thousand years and the other is the end of the, uh, end of the thousand years. Um, as mentioned in the fourth seal, will Gog and, will Gog and Magog be gathered from peoples on the new earth? Satan was loosed out of his prison and went to gather all the people, the wicked, to bring them to this place and God rained fire and brimstone out of heaven and they were consumed. See, two battles all together. Question concerning the 68 million slain by the uh, Roman Catholic Church. What time in history did this take place and over how long a period of time did this take place? Take Smucker's glorious uh, Reformation. I guess some of these scholars have that. And it's a history of the church. And I forget now just what page it's on, but it's taken place from the time of the... the the thing was produced or given to the church by St. Augustine of Hippo, Africa. That was A.D. 354. And it lasted till 1850, the Massacre of Ireland. See, So that time is from A.D. 33, uh, A.D. 30, 354. Let me get that right now. See. From A.D. 354 to, to A.D. 1850. 1850, according to the history, there was 68 million Protestants put to death recorded on the Roman martyrology for disagreeing with the Pope of Rome. Amen. That's history. If you want to say it's wrong, well then, maybe George Washington wasn't here in Lincoln. You know, now let's lay it back to see it. But I believe it is here anyhow. I see signs that they were here. Amen. <laughs> Brother Branham, the 19th chapter of uh, an 18th first, yet have I kept me 7,000 of Israel. 7,000 in Israel all have bowed, their, bowed to Balaam and ever mouth or, or bowed to Balaam every which has not kissed him, mouth who has not kissed him. Please explain this for me about this uh, about the 700. It was 7,000, see? And that uh, kissing Bela. Don't you know? How many here was formerly Catholic? Sure. You kiss images. See? And remember, in the time of Babylon, in Nebuchadnezzar, when the Gentile kingdom was issued in, see? When the Gentile kingdom issued in, it come in by the worship of a man. Nebuchadnezzar made a statue of a man. And if you've got a spiritual mind, now listen to this revelation. That spirit, that man that he made a, a revelation of, or he made an image of by his revelation, was Daniel. Amen. A religious man being worshipped. See it? Because he named him um, Belzar, wasn't it? Or Belshazzar, which was the name of his god. And he made an image of that God, which was the image of Daniel, and Daniel refused to bow to his own image. <laughs> see? And here it is again. See, now watch. The Gentile kingdom was issued in in the days of Babylon by King Nebuchadnezzar, a Gentile king, putting church and state together by taking a holy an image of a holy man and forcing worship to it. Amen. The Gentile kingdom ends in the feet with a handwriting on the wall by a political power, this united church and state together to force kissing images. Amen. 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 
image of a holy man. Sure. Brother Branham, when this rapture takes place, when the rapture takes place, will the young children that do not know right from wrong go in the rapture if their names are on the book? <laughs> That's right. See. All right. Brother Branham, you said last night that the there was 700 people to be saved would be saved under Elijah's preaching. You meant seven. Th- yeah, that's right. Please forgive me for that. See? That's all right. See? Uh, I did. Right. Brother Branham, will you interpret? Uh, after you open, Brother Branham, will the D E S P dispensation? Pardon me. Will the dispensation? That's not you. It's me. See. Will the dispensation of grace be over after you open the seventh seal? I hope not. <laughs> no, no, friends, don't get that in your mind now. See? You just go right on. Dig the potatoes and go to church and go right on. If it takes place in the morning, you'll be found doing just exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Don't, don't start See, When you do, you twist the very thing away from uh, the purpose that's intended for it. You get little peculiar thoughts and you get own ideas about things. Don't take your own idea. Just when you sit and listen to things like that, say, thank you, Lord. I'm just going to walk a little closer to you. Don't quit work and say, I'll sell out everything. A man running up here the other day from North Carolina, just before we left, he said, glory to God, can you tell me where uh, some great somebody was? And I said, no. Oh, yes, sir. Said this guy's got the, said this guy is a president of the Octo Mission. I said, the what? said, Otto Mission. I said, I don't understand. And he said, oh, said, uh, this guy's a president. I said, well, what'd you say his name was? He said, Branham. I believe something like that. Brown or Branham? I said, well, my name's Branham. He said, are you the president of the Otto Mission? I said, no, sir. <laughs> he said, well, where's the millennium at? I said, I don't know. He said, why, well, you're, uh, you, you mean it, uh, it's going on right here and you don't know it? And I said, no, sir, I don't. And he said, well, glory to God, said, I got some, some friends that come told me and said, I quit work, still have his work clothes on. I said, brother, I want the millennium. And I said, well, I, I believe you're just a little bit confused, aren't you, brother? About that time, a car drove up, a taxi cab. She said, hold it, hold it, hold it. A little woman come up there and said, now you're going to pray for my husband. I said, yes, ma'am. What, what about it? She said, well, I understand you have to wait a month on the interview, see, to get prayed for. And I said, what? And she said, yes, sir. said, but I'm desperate. you got to pray for my husband. I said, sure, where's he at? Bring him on. This guy standing there looked all said, do you pray for the sick too? I said, yes, sir. So why did you say your name is Branham? I said, and you don't know about the millennium? I said, well, I, I, no, I don't. I said, I, I don't understand it. Just right in the Bible. He said, no, it's right now. People's come from everywhere. I said, where's it at? He said, Jeffersonville, Indiana, right under the bridge. <laughs> Sir, you got me bested. And I said, I don't know about it. I said, let's go in and sit down. Maybe we can talk this thing over. <laughs> we did. <laughs> see? Don't, don't. You see, friends, don't you never desire a ministry. You know what I mean? See? You'd be happy. You're just where you are. See? You just go right on. After the rapture of the bride, when does the church that had to go through the tribulation period stand judgment? Don't stand judgment. Is it before or after the millennium? Or the church. Oh, I beg your pardon. Pardon me, everyone who wrote this. Um, when does the church that after the rapture of the bride, when does the church that had to go through the tribulation period stand at the judgment? Is it after or before? After the rest of the dead live not for a thousand years. They didn't go with the bride. Now see, you have said many times that communism was raised up by God to serve his purpose as King Nebuchadnezzar. Now, where did the communism fit into the picture that will it finally will finally do? How does it uh, wind up? Many scholars believe that in the uh, kingdom of the north, Gog and Magog mentioned in the scriptures goes down against Israel in the um, in the uh, uh, they can't make out just what that is. Yeah, yeah. I believe of the some of the tapes taken. Said you said it would finally drop it. That communism would finally destroy uh, 
Catholicism or the Vatican by uh, an explosion. Is this right? Yes. Revelation 16, you'll find it, and Revelation 18, uh, 8 and 12. If the person sure wants to take this piece of paper on that, you can look it right up. Yeah, see? Alas, alas, that great city, for in one hour she's come to her end. You see? The merchants and everything here, the bought her merchandise, it will be. That's right. And don't just, quit, just forget about communism. See? It's nothing in the world but a bunch of uh, people that's nothing but barbarians. That, it's ungodly. It's a system. Let me show you something. Just show you how simple it is. Why, there's only 1% of all Russia that's communism. They need a messenger. 1% and 99% of them are still on the Christian side. 1%. Now, how can 1% control 99%? That ought to explain it to you right there. God didn't permit it. Why? Well, they'd be thrown out long ago. See? Sure. Amen. Brother Graham, you said that Rome would take the government, well, the Jews, at the last three and a half years, that is going, the, the first three and a half years of the tribulation, or will it be the last three and a half years? Is this correct? It will be the last three and a half years. That's right. Not the first because it's already passed. Got one more after this. Um, my dear brother, will the Malachi 4 5 Elijah go to the wilderness as First Kings 17 tells us the other Elijah did. Well, I wouldn't exactly say that he would um, that he would go to the wilderness, but he'd be this, you see. He was Elisha and Elijah. Did you notice? Most a man like that are men who are away. They, they keep away from the people. They're very odd. They don't associate too much with people. You notice how Elisha was and Elijah and John the Baptist and that nature of that spirit, you see. And uh, they don't, he, he, I believe the man be a lover of the wilderness and maybe stay in the wilderness, but now just to say he's going to uh, be a hermit and live in the wilderness, I don't know about that. Sometimes they did. Elisha didn't, but Elijah did. And then John, he, he lived in the wilderness. And hard to tell these other prophets when they come out of Judea there, I don't know where they'll stay. They may camp out on the hill somewhere. Or, or what they'll do in the days of their prophecy, I, I don't know what they will do. But you, what I'm trying to say is this. Will they, they, will they, um, will they be a... Um, uh, they're trying to ask, will they just be wilderness dwellers? Well, they'd have to go to northern British Columbia to get enough wilderness to dwell in now somewhere, you see. So it'll be someone... The wilderness is all cut out. See? There's not much wilderness left. Amen. See? So the only thing... that They might be a lover of the wilderness. See? And stay maybe a lot in the wilderness. And they'll be... Have, you can notice... The nature of them is that uncompromising, see? And you, you'll know it when it comes. See? You'll see it. You're, you're wide awake. Now, here's one. I don't know how to touch it. And uh, I got another just before this. Now I'm going to ask some snap the tape this minute. Uh, if God is one personality, why or how could he talk to himself on Mount Transfiguration? Well, I've just explained that to you. See? I'd like to ask you this. I'm going to... Uh, when Jesus prayed to the Father, you see. Uh, I believe you have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, don't you, brother? Why don't you stand up just a minute? You claim to have the baptism of the Holy Ghost? I do, too. Now, what is that? Then I don't claim that I'm have the, I have the powers within myself to unfold these mysteries. I don't have the power to heal the sick. It's God. I believe you're a minister, if I'm not mistaken, you're from Arkansas. All right? Now... And in the, you, you have this is to preach the gospel. Ordinarily, you was raised on a farm and around like that. You just don't know nothing about. But something come into you to preach the gospel. You don't claim that to be yourself at all. That's another person called the Holy Ghost. Is that right? Okay. Now, I want to ask you, do you: that Holy Ghost dwells within you. Is that right? Uh, do you talk to Him, speak to Him, pray to Him? All right, that's all I want. Thank you very much. Now you get it? I'll ask you one. How did it come that when Jesus in St. John 3, he said, When the Son of Man shall be, which now is in heaven, see, now is in heaven, shall come to earth, see, the Son of Man which now is in heaven, and here he stood right here talking to the person. Amen. Now, you answer me that. 
Jesus and the Father was the self-same person, Amen. just the same as the Holy Spirit in me. You're looking to me preaching, but it's not me. Amen. It's not me who can speak a word that could bring, as you know, an animal, sit there and look at it and kill the animal and eat it. That's creative power. That doesn't lay any human being. It's not me who could take a little boy here, man, the doctor's laying him on his back with heart trouble tonight, and say, Thus saith William Branham. No. Thus saith the Lord. It's Amen. finished. Amen. And rang down the doctor next day and it's all gone. A kid with leukemia until his eyes are bulged out and yellow all over in his stomach until they're taking it to the hospital to give it blood and things to even get it here. And in five minutes time, cry for a hamburger and take it back to the doctor the next day and can't even find a trace of it. That's Thus saith William Branham. That's thus saith the law. Amen. Yet he is an individual different from me, but the only way he's expressed is through me. Amen. See, that's how Jesus and the Father was. Jesus said, it's not me that doeth the works, it's my Father that dwelleth in me. Amen. Now, the Son of Man shall ascend from heaven, which now is in heaven. Yeah. See, what was it? He was omnipresent because he was God. Amen. Now, this other... Uh, I won't say these words. Um, explain what she is talking about. In all words, for the Lord speaketh unto thee. Thank you, Father God. We thank you for the spirit of your being here. And we are told, Father, that one time when the, the enemy was coming in and the Spirit fell upon a man and prophesied to him and told him it set the thing in order where they knowed how to go and defeat the enemy and where to find the enemy. And I thank you, Father, that you remain the same God that you ever was. You're still just the same. We changing ages, changing times, changing people, but you never change. Your systems are the same. Your grace is the same. Your works are the same because they are marvelous and up way past any knowledge of man to ever understand. So we are thankful, Lord, that your secrets are hid into the hearts of your servants. And we are so happy for this, Lord. And may we go forth as shining lights to, from place to place and trying with love to, to bring others in that we might sing in every little corner and cast the net in to be sure that we get every fish that belongs to you. And then the Lamb shall take his bride to be ever at his side. We're waiting for that time. Through Jesus Christ's name, amen. How many sick is in here? Let's see your hands. Well, it looks to be about... Hold your hands up again. About 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110, 111, 112, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, Standing right in here is anointing. Now, as far as we have moved up into that spirit now, see, and you see that something, you know that something, something is present. And if you could ever believe, you ought to believe it right now. If you're ever going to believe, it's now. Now, we want you just to come real quietly and uh, let those that are in that aisle there that raise up their hands step out into this aisle and then go down this way and then we take them aisle by aisle and at this 45, 45, 47 of them, it won't take very much. I'm going to ask Brother Neville if he'll come step right down here with me and we're going to pray for them. First, them is coming out into the aisle. Just stand up just a minute now so we can pray for you here and lay hands on everybody. Now, that's right. Just everybody's going to come in the prayer line. Them is going to come in the prayer line. Now, now, see, conserving the time so we'd be sure to get it, we're going to pray for you now. Look, friends, now let me explain it to you. Jesus Christ said this, These signs shall follow them that believe. Now watch. He never said if they pray for them. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. And if God can take 
unfailing case of leukemia. And a little girl that can't have faith for herself and make that thing perfectly whole. She can take the next case with a little boy. It's so healing till the doctors can't even find any rheumatic fever in his blood or anything else. What can he do for you? Now them little bitty fellows, they don't understand what prayer would be. They just laid hands on them. And it did it. We can understand it. Now, while you're standing to pray now, Heavenly Father, with your great presence laying here, the great Holy Spirit, the one we have the picture of, the one that we read in the Bible, he's present right here now. He is revealing himself to human flesh. How we have seen him without one time failing through the years to be able to reveal the very thoughts of the human heart to reveal the sin that they did tell them exactly what happened and what will be without one time failing then we know that the God of Abraham Isaac and of Israel still remains God yes. in the person of Jesus Christ and now by his spirit uh, descending from heaven under the blood that was shed at Calvary, coming down among people to make himself manifested in human flesh just before the burning of the world. The great Holy Spirit represented in human flesh those precious people who has accepted the blood atonement and the Holy Spirit takes into their being God represented in human flesh. Therefore, it would not be the human flesh only just to perform the act, like in baptism or so forth, Amen. with a commission that these signs shall follow them that believe. By laying hands on the sick, the Holy Spirit would see to it that they got well if they had believed. Amen. Now, Father, we know that these things are true. These people standing are going to pass under the hands of ministers who has received this Holy Spirit. Amen. And they are ready, Lord, to lay hands upon the sick. And we know, Father... That if these people only believe, just as every word that you promised is got to happen, so does. And it cannot happen without faith, for it is impossible to please God without faith. We just can't do it. And now, with faith believing, with this promise laying before us, with the seals of the Bible being open to us, that God keeps his word. May these precious people who are sick, Lord, and my feeling for them as a human being in a mortal body like theirs, and uh, they're the same Holy Spirit that dwells within us, Lord, dwells in them, and we feel sorry for each other, and knowing that the new covenant in the new blood, if the old one offered healing, how much more will this new and better do? Uh, Father, may it be so that these people won't fail, but will receive their healing as they pass by the hand of thy servant. Through Jesus Christ's name, Amen. Now, now we'll this side will be seated while this side comes through, and then this side will go back in the other side. Now, some of you brethren here, they'll stand up. I'll be your ministers along here, all of you along here. Where's the doctor, brother Ned? Would you go be in the prayer line, brother Ned? All right, all right. As soon as you're prayed for, drop right into the line. Now, let these on this side over here just be seated just a moment. Now, take the ones from this side. Then, then we'll come down and take the middle aisle and send them back this way. Then take this aisle and send them through this way. And we'll pray for everybody. I'm going to ask Brother Teddy, where is he? All right. I want you to play on there. The great physician now is near. And the pianist, everywhere they're at, accompany me if you will. Listen, you remember the time where that was playing and a little boy was brought out on the platform? The little Amish girl playing the great physician now is near she had long dark hair or blonde hair rather a Mennonite or an Amish girl one laying back on her head and the Holy Spirit struck the little boy just by laying hands yeah. crippled in his feet and he jumped off of my arms and runs down through the platform his mother raised up and fell back a Mennonite I believe to begin with and the Spirit of God struck this little Mennonite girl or Amish, whatever she was, her dad and them sitting there with uh, their clothes on as Mennonites, 
or whatever it was, and she jumped up from the piano with her hands up in the air and her pretty hair fell across. She looked like an angel, started singing in the spirit. And as she did that, the piano continually played. The great physician now is here to sympathize and Jesus. Amen. Everybody standing there, thousands, looking down upon them keys, moving up and down. The great physician now is here to sympathize in Jesus. People raised up from wheelchairs off of cot stretchers, went walking home. That same Lord Jesus is right here this morning. This is the same as it was that early. Just believe now. Play that song, if you will. The great physician. Now let everybody pray. Let them walk right through the room. Go right down this way and right to your seat or wherever you want to go. As you make your way, you've got it clear back there. All right, so go right back to your seat. Then we'll stand up. Now listen, while these are being prayed for, you pray for them. Now when you're being prayed for, they'll pray for you. Now you ministers along here, stand up. I want you to lay hands on these as they come by. Now everybody... Heads bowed, and keep your heads bowed, keep praying, and when you pass by, then lay, hands laid on you. Remember, it is a promise of the God that reveals the secrets of his book, the secrets of the human heart. He's the God that will confirm that if you believe it. Now, everybody in prayer, are you understand? All right, let's bow our heads. Now, Lord Jesus, as these people come, may the power of Almighty God quicken their faith immediately as they pass by. Oh, in Jesus' name. All right. Let the line start this way. As everyone lay hands on your ministers as they pass by. In the name of the Lord, the Lord Jesus. I lay my hands in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I lay my hands in the name of the Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name. You stay what that in the mind. Remember he's humble. Humble it comes.
else wants the prayer line, would you get in, please? If anybody else wants the prayer line, would you get in, please? Receive your healing, my brother, from Jesus Christ. Receive your healing, sister, from Jesus Christ. Receive your healing, brother, from Jesus Christ. Receive your healing, sister, Lord, from the name of Jesus Receive your healing, Receive healing to the world by the hand of Jesus. Receive healing to the world by the hand of Jesus. Brother, in the name of Jesus, receive healing to the world by the hand of Jesus. Brother, in the name of Jesus, receive healing to the world by the hand of Jesus. Brother, in the name of Jesus, receive healing to the world by the hand of Jesus. Brother, in the name of Jesus, receive healing to the world by the hand of Jesus. Brother, in the name of Jesus, receive healing to the world by the hand of Jesus. Brother, in the name of Jesus, receive healing to the world by the hand of Jesus. Brother, in the name of Jesus, receive healing to the world by the hand of Jesus. Brother, in the name of Jesus, receive healing to the world by the hand of Jesus. Brother, in the name of Jesus, receive Receive your healing, sister. Receive your healing, brother. Jesus Brother works. Receive your healing, brother. Sister, receive your healing. Receive your healing, brother. Brother, brother, receive your healing. Billy Paul, as many cards as you give out. Yes, Lord. <laughs> now receive your healing. this tremendous anointing I, I believe if you yes. look now don't look up for some great big something just remember the simple thing of believing what he promised now let's all say it together we, we do 
not look for something big, but in Jesus' name, we receive his promise. Amen. Amen.